This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host. A baby. Yeah, a baby is sitting right here. You didn't even notice you were here for 10 minutes. Then you're like, oh, you've got a baby in here. That's right. So and I'm sitting I- on it. Whoops. <laughs> that's how good I am at parenting, Mason. Yeah, that's you right. You don't even know when I'm trying to hatch a baby. That's what you do, right? <laughs> yep. So you sit on a baby? That's exactly what you do, yeah. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. It's uh, where if, if you notice we've got some more, more dulcet tones, mm. it's because we're currently mindful of the baby who's sleeping. Yes. And what will happen is the volume levels will slowly rise throughout the episode and yep. we'll start doing some yelling. That's right, exactly. The baby will wake up. The and then ba- your wife will wake up and yell at us. <laughs> yeah. Which will which is bad for the baby if you ask me. I agree. Yeah. And Claire should really be more mindful of That's podcasting. Right. Yes. Yeah. But if you do like yelling, uh never fear because we did record some segments earlier in the week. That's right. Where presumably the volume went way up. It's so gonna go crazy. It's gonna be go you're not crazy. Gonna be re- you're not gonna be ready for it. If you're gonna if you're one of those people <laughs> who has to do a thing where you have to keep your hands free at all times and you can't adjust the volume, be ready. Because the volume's gonna be <laughs> Just it's it's gonna it's gonna be we we call it dynamic that, in the yeah, biz. Yeah, it's gonna be some dynamic audio. I mean, it's dynamic in the sense it's gonna blow one of your eardrums out. Exactly so. right. Yes, that's dynamic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a bit of sad news up top. This comes to us from a listener of the show, Ted Sullivan, who's actually a writer. He's worked on Star Trek Discovery, Supergirl, Riverdale. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, he had a friend uh, by, by the name of Keith C. Blocker. I'm just going to read a little bit about him and his his situation. But on Saturday, June 13th, uh, we lost a good man uh, far too soon. Keith C. Blocker was a husband, father, a son, a brother, a friend, a teacher, and a leader. He was a man of deep faith who epitomized love, grace, tolerance, and patience. And he spent a lifetime fighting the painful effects of sickle cell disease. Yeah. He was an unrepentant film nerd who could mimic Ben-Hur perfectly uh, before effortlessly switching to Greedo in the cantina in Flawless Hutties. Oh, my goodness. I know. Keith exemplified the best of both humanity and religion, leading without ego, helping without agendas, loving without conditions, and always, always giving to others uh, more than he took for himself. And after a lifetime of pain, a sickle cell attack finally ended his life. And now Keith's family needs our help. We are raising money to help Beth and Hayden Blocker, like he helped countless others, both strangers and loved ones. If you knew him, you knew what a loss... Uh, this is to the world. If you didn't, the smile you see in the pictures are truly the window into his beautiful soul. So what there is, is actually a donation button that I've linked below that if you want to help out uh, Keith's family. Oh, very nice. Thanks, left, guys. Yeah, he's left, he's left them behind, obviously, in, in a situation that would definitely um, be in need of some help. If you could contribute, that would be terrific. Obviously, you don't have to because the world is horrible. But yeah, just thought we'd bring that to people's attention. And thanks to, um, thanks to Ted for bringing that to our attention also. Thank you. So we can help out in some small way. And speaking of sad news, oh, James. I know. <laughs> is this the last bit of sad news? Ah, uh, depends. Do you think DC is sad news? DC movies, Snyder Cut, Mason? Got him. Got him, didn't I? Preemptively got them. I'm looking forward to the emails. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ian Holm, uh, who people might know, star of Alien, Fifth Element, Lord of That's the right. Rings, Garden State. The last role he did was in 2014. He reprised his role as Bilbo Baggins That's for The right. Hobbit, for, for some Hobbit, yeah. bookend mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he died in, at age 88 uh, related to, to Parkinson's. That's a shame. In, I mean, incredible innings, incredible performances in all of these different projects. But yeah, yeah. it's interesting that he, mm. you know he's had he's had a defining role in so many like generations. Yeah, like everybody knows him from Alien, mm. and and like a younger generation is like The Hobbit, of course. I thought you were going to say Fifth Element, but that's not on a younger generation anymore, uh, is it? No. It's us. <laughs> it's, Just, I had a moment of self reflection, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, like like young 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 people love the Fifth Element, you yeah. know. But that Luc Besson film from like the mid '90s or whenever it came 97, out. '97. Oh say. my god! It's a good movie, right? When I was a kid, you know. Currently, mm. yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, I thought you were going to tell a story. It is, it is a good movie. Yeah, absolutely. and it's interesting. Uh, it was brought to my attention this week by our friends over the Planet Broadcasting, great mates, Facebook group. Mm. It's uh, one of the rare movies where the protagonist and the villain never meet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, spoiler alert. For that twenty-three-year-old movie, <laughs> that's right. that there's a there's a hero and a villain. Yeah, yep. it's it's quite an odd film, isn't it? It's very odd. Yeah, yeah. but in in a good way. Uh, and Maybe Luke Besson's best. Yes, mm. I quite like uh, Summer Valerium. If you've seen Summer Valerium, I have seen I have seen all of Valerian. Yes. Yeah. Do you like? I some, like it as a concept. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think there's some really Are we good stuff about in Valerian. There. No, on I, the think, show? I think we watched it at different times. Yeah, maybe. But also, yeah. it doesn't start in Holm. So yeah. Let's just cap that off. I'd like to see another one, but we'll get we'll mm. get to that. Sure. Because in the comic books, in the original comic books, yeah, they're 
space and time cops. Did you know? Yes. That? Okay. Right. But in the in the movie, they're just space cops. And they French or is it a manga? They're French. Okay. <laughs> they are French. Yes. Though it's a French source material. I'm saying. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Because Cara Delevingne, who is in that movie, yeah, her character in the comic books is like a 10th century scullery maid. Oh, and the, okay. And the time cops, like, she discovered that they, she encountered some time cops and they're like, should we kill her? Oh, we should probably bring her into the future and make Give her, her time, guns and make stuff. Give her a time cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Mm. So uh, the worldwide total was 225 million, uh, just talking of Valerian. Yeah. But um, it cost 177 to 205 million. So yeah, it, mm. big, big, massive bomb. But there's a moment in that movie, if we're talking Ian Holm, yes. which he's not, he's not in it. But, yeah, we've lost the thread a little bit quite yeah. early. Yes, <laughs> but there's a moment where there's a gut, there's a like a shootout in between dimensions where he's yeah. in an empty, just a big like sand flat. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. also he's partially in another dimension where there's like a, a like a bizarre like a market bazaar situation. Yeah, yeah, it's a really yeah. clever idea. I think it's a, yeah, it's exactly. not all great, but there's moments like no, that. But like, there's some really solid. It's ideas definitely worth a watch, and it's yeah. like on Netflix and stuff now. So yeah, exactly. Oh no, it's not now because we mentioned it. Yeah, we did. That's too late. Uh, also, uh, Cara Delevingne's character Loreline mm. invented the name Loreline. Is that true? Yeah. Cara Delevingne invented the name Laura. No, Loreline. her character's name is Loreline and, and Valerian and Loreline is the name of the company. They, they invented the name Loreline. I wonder if Cara Delevingne invented the name Cara Delevingne. I wonder if there was another Cara Delevingne before her. Something to think about. I mean, even if that were true, if there were no Cara Delevingne's before her, I don't think she gave herself her own name. No, okay, fair enough. Are you, have you, James, have you left your child with no name? Are you expecting your child... Is this why we never mention your kids' names on the podcast? Because you haven't given them names? <laughs> They'll figure it out when they're ready. Okay, well. You got a problem with that? No. Nope, you got a problem with nope, that? No, nope, I'm not a parent. I can't judge. I can't judge your weird naming conventions, all right? Good Lord. How long into a name do you think you can change your name? How do you mean? Because there's definitely been some times where I'm like, I wonder if I just change their names. <laughs> oh, you mean cooler. your kids' names? I thought you meant to, to change your Delavine. own name. I oh, no, you can change your own name yeah, whenever. Yeah. Oh, you're thinking how? Mm. Until when, when people jump on board, I mean. Because, you know, because, like, can I do it when they're, like, six? <laughs> I, no, because I think, I think your kid would be so used to yeah. responding to the original name. They'd be like, Dad, that's not why you – they'd be so – that would mess them up. Yeah, probably would. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying as an experiment <laughs> you could do it. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. I'm sure that people have done it for various reasons. Yeah, right. Crimes, probably. Definitely crimes, yeah. yeah. Uh, probably the state has probably renamed some kids sometimes. You know, sometimes somebody will be like, my name, my kid's name's Adolf Hitler Smith, and you're like, uh, why, why did you do why that? Why did you do that? What's wrong with you? Mm. Yeah. Anyway, Ian Holm, oh, yeah. uh, apparently a very nice man, put in some terrific performances. As you said, multiple generations and decades yeah. of really solid, terrific work. Yeah. Uh, 88, you know, it's pretty good innings. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of – I. I Sort of had wondered what had happened to him, you know, because we hadn't seen him in a few years. That's true. Uh, but, yeah, because I remember him looking pretty frail in The Hobbit because I think the plan was initially that he was going to reprise the role because there was a flashback in Lord of the Rings where oh, he's in, in Holm. as in the entire movie would be yeah. him, right? Yeah, but right. I think they'd left it too long and he got too old because Bilbo's supposed to be, like, a bit older in the books, I believe. He's supposed to be, like, 60 or 70, isn't he? Because uh, he's 111. He's 111 in the, in the yeah. movie. In, uh, in, the, in the start of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because the ring made him live longer. And he's like, this is cool. But he's also like, I think this has fucked me up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Like, just between us. <laughs> At his 11th birthday party, he's just like bringing people in. <laughs> but he tells everybody. Over yeah. the course of the night, he just brings people in. Listen, listen. This fucked me up. I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I got to live. I don't know, I'm not sure how long hobbits live. They're not, it's, I think if you live that long, you're That's too long because you stay catch it, see him later when he's lost the ring. Yeah, yeah, and he looks terrible. Yeah, like right. he's he has a dramatic. See, I told guys, I told you. Yeah, I told you. I look. I, look, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I look great earlier, but yeah, but on the inside, That's just 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 a mess. In here. Just a just a disaster. Uh, Star Wars news. Oh, uh, do you want some? Do you want the good news? Yes. Star Wars celebration has been cancelled. James, just okay. <laughs> Is that what you wanted? <laughs> well, I was going to say, I mean, generally speaking, I exclusively want good news. I'm not yeah. sure why I would, I would want bad news just generally. But. So we can riff on it. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Do you love riffing on stuff? Yeah, I, oh, no, that's true. I do. There we yeah. go. There uh-huh. he is. <laughs> okay, so Star Wars Celebration has been cancelled. Yeah. Any, when was this going to happen? Uh, it was supposed to happen this, this year. It was, uh, so there oh, was, this year? Okay, yeah, right. I love Star Wars Celebration. I, 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 I just I made a joke then. About big. Oh, but, that's the that's riffing good. we were talking the about. The fun do. riffing. Okay, right. I thought it's we a were classic just, example. Thought we were just going to be riffing on bad news. No, 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 no. We we can riff anywhere. That's the thing about riffing. Oh my goodness! It can go. It can be happening anywhere, anytime. <gasps> you could you do it in the middle of talking about Ian Holmes' career, James. You could have told me this hundreds of episodes ago. <laughs> I would have really would have really would have shifted up a gear. <laughs> that was just serious analysis of Ian Holmes. <laughs> 
acting career. Yeah. And that, and that whole bit. With the Valerian bit in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. fair enough. Mm-hmm. So, But now I know I can get Lucy Goose. He's going to go wild. Mm-hmm. Buck wild. Uh, is that a porn star? I feel like I probably just said a porn star's name by accident. The people are like, you a fan? I don't know who he is. <laughs> so, should I Google Let's it? Let's both Google it. Okay. I, don't, I feel like that's not... I'm putting on know. my VPN? You got to do it? I'm going to do it. No, it's like the name of a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there would be a porn star. I don't know. I don't... Is it too generic? I don't know. Do porn stars have those... I just assume porn stars just had regular names these days. Oh, maybe like they that do. That feels like a name in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. Let's, bring the, let's reel the riffing back in. I okay. think we've gone too far <laughs> off the too leash. Far. But so Star Wars Celebration was supposed to be this year. Obviously, they're not doing big, big events for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the idea is that people thought, oh, maybe they'll go digital. Like they'll go online, which is like one we're going to talk about a bit later. But no, so it's going to be 2022 because they do Disney Expo every second year. So, oh, I see. Right, so right, right. Okay. we will get announcements of stuff and trailers because there's another season of Mandalorian coming up. There's some other shows that will, that will probably just be announced through their YouTube channel and social media networks and mm. such. So there you go. But what we did get, and I was hoping you saw this because I forgot to ask for the show, <laughs> Star Wars Squadrons, we got gameplay footage. I did see a little bit of gameplay okay, footage. There we go. You, got a, you, you, you can be in an X-Wing. What you else can, can you be in ban? a Y-Wing. What else can you be in? A-Wing. What else can you be in? TIE Fighter. What else can you be in? TIE Bomber. Yeah, what else can you ban? High Interceptor. Yeah, what else can you ban? Um, a lot of, lot of trouble if you don't know the <laughs> oh, names of all the bloody very good. ships in the game. There's like a U-Wing and some other oh, stuff. U-Wing. I like the U-Wing. That's the one they introduced in Rogue One. Oh, yeah, yeah right. I, I really like that ship. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's a transport ship, so it doesn't make any sense. But what they've done, it's like it stocks you up in battle. It's like you oh. need more shields? Catch. Yeah. Huh. doesn't matter how Star Wars works. You <laughs> can just really throw doesn't. shields it's true, from yeah. one ship to the other. Mm-hmm. So we haven't had a... Flight Sim Star Wars game since like the there was the Rogue Squadron games yeah but right properly like where you're doing the shielding and everything since the X Wing and Tie Fighter games from the nineties. I saw some footage of this. Mm. There's a there's a story mode. Is this a, is there yes. going to be a massively multiplayer or a multiplayer so situation? It's a five v five online. Okay, but you're part of a like bigger scenarios, I assume. Yeah right. And uh, there's also like a six to eight hour campaign. Or, I might have made that up. There's a shortish campaign because okay, it's only forty hours. 40, in a style of what was the last thing? What was the one where you were in like you 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 played with the in with the Imperials and you're in like oh Cobra Battlefront or something? too? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was yeah. pretty disappointing. Okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it got better. From um, I didn't really love the I liked the story, but I didn't love the gameplay. But mm-hmm. and I didn't like the microtransactions. Spitfire which, Squadron. Which about, what were they called? Uh, something like that. It's not that. It's Hellfire Inferno, Squadron. Inferno. Inferno. Squadron. There we go. Yeah, but then they really fixed the multiplayer and they took out a bunch of the bad stuff and people love that. What you're going to say they fixed the multiplayer. They took out a lot of the multiplayer. Yeah. So it just became a single player game. It's just yeah, it's just one man running around an empty map being like I won, I think. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I'm alone, so yeah. I've got no one to share this with. There's just a really bad vector graphic of like you win just in the <laughs> in the sky and you just run around, you run around, you shoot a gun and then you look up and you're like, "Oh, I did it again." I used to do that uh the, you know the Jedi Knight, Knight games, Jedi yeah. Knight 2. I used uh-huh. to go online to try and find anybody who could play that game and I uh-huh. never encountered another human being on it. So I used to go into multiplayer maps and just wait just for me. Did just you <laughs> What's the circumstance of this? Did you get Jedi Knight two years after it was a thing? Or? No, I don't think. Oh, maybe, yeah, no, not years after. It was like okay. in the, the mid to late 90s whenever that oh. game came out. But Everybody was just dialing up. Everyone was playing just... Doom 2 yeah. and Quake. You know what, you would, what was happening is you would you were just in there, you were waiting, you were waiting, and then when somebody finally got in, your mum would have picked up the phone. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeeah. And then you were out. i got to ring your grandma to yell at her. That's I right. know, mum. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so there you go. Star Wars news, all in all. But uh, there, there'll be more stuff Star I mean, Wars it looks, coming. Um, the squadron yeah. looks great. Are you going to get it? Maybe. Yeah. Um, you can do stuff like apparently like the skills are really easy to kind of pick up but hard to master. And yeah. you can shift things like like if you're going, if you've got people behind you, you can shift all the shielding to the back, back or yeah, put right. all the power to the lasers and all that kind of nice. stuff. All, all that X-Wing type stuff. I reckon I'd stuff. put the shields all around me. And then heaps of power to the lasers. You know yeah, what I mean? that's, that's just, right. just, just just have an, it all. Just an impenetrable level of shields and a, and a very powerful laser. You could you even know? build like a bigger ship around you. It's I like think, a shell. Yeah, I'd, I'd take that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you worried? Maybe just make my mm, ship like laser proof. Yeah, you know. Are you worried that other people might do that though? Or do you think you're the only one who? No, would I'm think the only of one who would think of it. So <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? That is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, customizable ships and characters. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. And I would I would also maybe make the character that I'm playing maybe invulnerable. In space. Yeah, okay. So even if somehow I was shot out of the spaceship, I could just like swim through space and just sh- shoot down all the you other You could ships. give yourself superpowers, I guess. Superpowers, you could be like exactly. Superman, yeah, yeah. yeah, like Superman, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 
That's really. And then somebody would shoot me, and I'd be like, I mean, good luck and everything. But I've got, <laughs> I've got powers like Superman. Do you want Collins to edit this out so people don't see you coming? No, they're no, just no, like, no. there's a man James, flying around like James, Superman. <laughs> I want him to see me coming. <laughs> Put the fear of God in them, you know? Sure. Yeah. It's funny because with the recent Star Wars materials, games in particular, mm. they've been really focused on not customizing stuff because it it's, breaks yeah. the flow of the universe but or whatever. But then we got Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. And then we got so many customizable ponchos. We got so many collectibles. But that doesn't affect the overall story. <laughs> it's true. It doesn't. I'm talking about things like you can choose your character yeah, right, and like right. pick the type of alien or person oh, they are. Greedo. Gret- like a Greedo. But with Superman's powers. <laughs> Nobody would see that coming. Exactly. Just fly Hard, through the Millennium shoot Falcon. Shoot first, don't care. It doesn't matter. You know why? Blaster proof. Yeah. Got Superman's Why powers. is he alive? It doesn't matter. The one thing that, that brings to mind, the, the one thing that you you remember when you see a, like a game like this again mm. is that a lot of Star Wars spaceships do not have good like viewing areas. Oh, like right. If you're, concrete, like a, yeah. if you're in a TIE bomber or something like that, it's just you, the, <laughs> the, your viewing areas, just, it's just like filled with struts and window frames yeah. and then like an enormous targeting computer that like covers the bottom third yeah, of the screen. Right. And it's like, what, this I, This is bad. And, and no side windows maybe? Sometimes some you've got things. no side windows, yeah. But I know it's also, we're not a video game podcast, but uh-huh. also uh, if you can play in VR so you can look you around, your head. which yeah, is right, really right. cool. So, But it doesn't matter if you're in a box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there you go. So that's something, isn't it? Mm. Did you see the Justice League Snyder Cut teaser trailer? I did. It was Dinah Prince, yes. and she's like, "Who painted this? And what is it? Mm. It's Dark Side." And then, oh, he was, painted that. He painted it himself. Wow, he's a very vain man. What do you What are your thoughts on self portraits? Do you think it's uh Yes. Do you think you should branch out and do other things? What if you What if you met somebody and they exclusively did self portraits? I think be, you can do a couple now and then. You do your Van Gogh. Your Van Gogh. That's okay. That would be fascinating <laughs> if somebody exclusively did self portraits. There's got to be an art. Have you seen that guy? There's a guy. I think he's a uh, like Edwardian era or something like that. And he it looks like a modern day joke, right? That somebody's done. But it's like a like a this. Like yeah, I, th- I think Edwardian and Arrow guy. Like he's wearing like breeches and a, and a and a hat and a vest and like a silken you know rough or whatever, and he's like being like hey, and he's doing <laughs> finger guns and stuff. <laughs> and it's real. It's real. He's a real oh, guy. Wow. He was a real artist from this era who was just like I'm, I don't like doing this. Yeah, the serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hold a bowl of fruit and look stern. How would I Google this? <laughs> if I'm gonna go finger. I'm gonna write in finger guns Renaissance man and yeah, see what happens. It's, yeah. Lunatic. Anyway, uh, I'd be fascinated by that. Yeah. So, th- so that's pretty. Much, that's our first kind of moving look, though, at the Justice League cut, mm. uh, which we're going to see a lot more of very soon. Which I'll talk about in a minute. But I just want to wait till you find this picture. Okay. We're His name laws- is Joseph de Croix. Yep. French noble portrait painter, pastelist, miniaturist, and engraver who was successful portraitist at the court of Louis the Sixteenth of France. So, like eighteenth. 18th century. So he's one of those dudes who you like say he got he got into like he got into the court. Like he yeah, just yeah. His, his less formal in. portraits reflect his fascination with physiognomy and show an interest in expanding the range of facial expressions beyond those of conventional portraiture. James, you ready for this? Yeah. Hey, oh, like, I have hey, seen that. Hey, yeah. Hey. Real guy. You, it looks like the dude from um, How Did This Get Made? Paul Shear. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But like bit, a much yeah. worse version of Paul Shear. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Probably with, with pleurisy or, or, or syphilis or whatever. Yeah. I was going to say all the bends, which is the <laughs> thing also. But oh. he probably didn't have that, did he? Mm. He's doing uh, some yawns. Yep. He's doing a bit of a shush. Oh, my God. It's good stuff. This guy was well ahead of his time. I know, right? Anyway, I love all forms of self-expression. Oh, well, here we go because we've got some more. Except podcasting. Ah, <laughs> but they did announce, you'll love this, DC yeah. Fandome. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yep. In lieu mm. of uh, their Comic-Con appearances and kicking the table that you're sitting at. That was to, to, to just punctuate how excited I am <laughs> for the thing you've just said, Fandome. So what they announced, it's coming August 22nd, so it's a couple of months out. Mm. Uh, they're going to be talking about movies, TV, games, and comics. Here's some of the things that they're going to be covering. The Batman, Ooh. The Suicide Squad, Ooh. Shazam, Ooh. Black Adam, Ooh. Wonder Woman 84, Stargirl, Legends of Tomorrow. I uh, left the W off in the end. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Doesn't matter. <laughs> the Flash, Harley Quinn, Teen Titans Go, Doom Patrol, Lucifer, Rocksteady. Will pr- they said video games, so I imagine Rocksteady and Warner Brothers' new oh, well, games. See, uh, Montreal. See, you know what? All, a lot of this stuff I'm like... Fine, 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 fine. Yeah. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. New Rocksteady game. Well, it's also, and WB Montreal who did Arkham Origins, Origins yeah. which I'd be really interested to see as well. Mm-hmm. So, and there could be some other DC games that we don't know about. They should face them off against each other. They should be like, we're doing a new Superman game. 
both of these developers are making it. <laughs> I would love that. Yep. Then we get a good one. Yeah. There were two Terminator Rise of the Machine games. Can't yeah, we get that, two of these? That is true. I d- I'd love a Superman game. Right. Just one. Okay, good okay. One. All right, but here's, here's the thing. Rings or no rings? Oh, rings. You've got to put them in. He's got to fly through rings, yeah. right? Obviously. At some point, it's like yeah, a yeah. clever little nod. It's like okay. with Spider-Man, that game, you had to get a balloon at some point. Okay, should it be set in the real world? Or a virtual world. Virtual world, because then you world. can dampen his powers right down. Exactly. Then he can fly those through those rings. Yeah, that's yeah. right. If he dares. Have you tried that game? Yes. It's excruciating. I know. It's one of those ones that's as bad as everyone says it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I borrowed it, I remember, in the 90s, because I'm like, I just have to play it. Yeah, Because it's Superman. Yeah. And I got, I did end up getting past the rings, but I just got stuck in a wall or something in the game. Just oh, I assume it was all rings. No, no, there's like indoor stuff. Because I never and, got further than... Yeah, no, there's other and stuff. And every video I've ever seen of that game, it's, it's, just just people, rings. it's just people flying through rings and then throwing their controllers. Yeah, so. no, there's more of that game. Huh. Well, if we ever do it for Caravan and Garbage, we might even start it like later on. That means I have to play to get... You have to finish the levels with all the rings. Yeah, yes. I've done, I did it before, and now I'm better at video games than ever and younger than but ever. you have less patience than <laughs> ever, so... Yeah, that's true because there wasn't – at that time I could have just been – I couldn't be like – You know what we do? Well, I'll we do put, something else because there we, was nothing else. We put your baby in the room and then every time you think about quitting, you look at your baby and go, oh, what if my baby she starves? She goes, don't do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't you even I'd think rather about it. starve, she'd say, actually. <laughs> that's what I mean, don't play this game. <laughs> I bet she was encouraging me to not quit. Mm. Uh, this, it's raining, everyone, it's just raining. so you know. Uh, if you can hear that rain noise coming through. I love so, it. Yeah, I love the idea of uh, all, a lot of this stuff going online. I mm. think it's really cool. EA had a press conference this week, mm-hmm. whatever, and they showed off all their new stuff. Mostly boring. Call of Duty game? They, yeah, no, EA? that was, they do another one Battlefield? of those. One of those. I don't okay. know. I don't remember who does what. Uh-huh. Uh, but FIFA. Yeah, they, yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. Challenge everything. Remember they used to say that at the start of the game? I remember they used to say, if it's in the game, it's in, it's in the game. Does that even mean? It was EA Sports. Yeah. If it's in the game, it's, is that like, oh, if it's, it's in, in the, the game, real game, it's in, it's the, in game. the video game. I never. Unless they meant it in reverse. Maybe they were like, if it's in the video game, contractually they must put it in the real <laughs> game. I think that would be fun. And we put a dragon in this soccer game. <laughs> You're going to have to do it, NFL. I don't yeah. know how you do it, but we don't care. you got to do it. <laughs> yeah. But your stadiums are getting burned to the ground. Big time. This is a, they said it was something like a 24 hour event, this as well. So it's going to be nonstop. Wow. I'm glad I've got some time to build it up, build up to it. So they're not like, it's next week. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to do? But again, I fully endorse uh, a virtual queuing system. Yeah. I, I definitely would like, I, I just, just, just to give it a sense of exclusivity. Yes. Sometimes you, sh- you, you, you click on the website and they're like, you've got to wait 20 minutes to see if you can get in this, onto this tab. <laughs> And sometimes you, did, you show and you up. Did it. <laughs> sometimes you show up, and they're like, uh, "All the tickets are sold out." Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. something else. Absolutely. Speaking of, yes, I signed back up for my gym because uh-huh. I love the gym. You know yes. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing burpees. I'm doing pull ups. I'm out mm-hmm. there. I'm doing maybe a, a bicep curl. It's not something I focus on because I think it should be part of a larger body movement. You know what, what? I mean? This <laughs> guy <laughs> fitness is about. Sometimes I think the only reason that he does this podcast with me is he can get his workout routine. And you know those people they corner you to a party. They're talking about their workout routine. It's that. And it's raining outside, so I can't just leave. You can't just leave. Yeah. I can't be like I'll just take up smoking and smoke outside. <laughs> So I signed back up. There we go. I, these, I got like a forty dollars discount for the month or whatever, which is pretty good. But then yes. I can't get into any classes. They're all solidly booked out for the next two weeks. Because there's only only like They're, four yeah, people. Yeah, so there. I'm like, what do I do? Um, Cancel it, obviously. Take up smoking. I'll take up smoking. Oh, I'd love to do that. You know, honestly, just burn it all down. But I can't. I got to live. <laughs> Anyway, yes. uh, this looks really exciting to me. Yep. There's at least five things in here that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Even if they're like, I, I, I mean, I wonder if we're going to get a trailer for The Batman. It might be a little bit early for a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But even just like a, the director sits down and just is like goes through some concept art and just like, we're doing this and this is the plan and yeah, these yeah. are the influences. What if it's just Robert Pattinson? He gets out, it's a, it's a live stream from his house yep. and he tries to make a pasta dish. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. I would absolutely take What's that. What's he up to? I don't know. Appar- apparently his real workout routine was released. Yes, I saw week. that. I, uh, yeah, but, but apparently he's going to be leaner. Wait than- a second. Have you just copied that from... Me. Does, does, does Robert Pattinson just do some burpees and some biceps? No, I, I could look it up if you want. Please. I think it's a lot of push-ups and stuff. Okay, right. Makes sense. I like burpees. A lot of people don't like them. I hate the rowing machine. Is the burpees the one where you do you do a push-up and then you stand up? Yeah, and then you go, to, go, and then you like go snap, for a smoke? Snap, and then you go for a smoke and you come back the next yeah, day and you do another one. But, uh, you snap into a jump. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, 
It's all about if you if you're worried if you if you're like how do I do it? Yeah. How do I how do I do a burpee? You can if you bring your put your legs straight when you come out of it, you don't have to kind of oh, squat out of it. It's it a again. handy hint. I didn't ask, but he's still talking. Yeah, that's about right. It. So here we go. Robert Pattinson, workout. Yes. Okay. Cut down on alcohol, processed meats, and fried foods. Boxing mm-hmm. in military style sandbag routine. So cut routine. down on fried foods because that's that's good. That's right. Good to know. Uh, boxing in military style sandbag routines on the beach. Running five to ten kilometers. Volleyball? Three. Does he mean volleyball on the beach? I think so. Yeah, Top it's Tom Cruise, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Three to six. That's three to six miles. Three to four. Uh, three to four times a week. For abs, he begins with regular five minute cardio workout, followed by bicycle crunches, dumbbell uh, side bends, double crunches, and the Superman exercise. I hate that. It's awful. And three sets of 25 reps per move. That's when you lie on your stomach, Mason. We're, doing, we're talking workout, no, which you yes. brought up, to I be did. fair. I did. That's true. No, to be fair, <laughs> this is a rod for my own back. All right. Yes. You, lie, you, you lie on your chest <laughs> and you've got to like, arch back like Superman. Oh, and yeah, you can also right. bring your feet up as well. And it's awful because you can't breathe. It's no good. Maybe that's why he's so cranky all the time. It might be because mm. he just wants to – he's just had a big bowl of pasta – Big yes. bowl of wet pasta and he's doing that. <laughs> I know I meant Superman, the character oh. of Superman. <laughs> he's just like, That's why he's so miserable all the time, yeah. <laughs> oh, some versions of Superman. Some versions are happy. Like the one who showed up at the end of Justice League after he tried to kill everyone. What's next, Mason? Um, do you want to uh, – well, Caravan of Garbage this week. It's Rate of Fire, isn't it? It sure is, it's yeah. tomorrow. No, Tuesday. No, because this goes out. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> You excited? But people can get it early, can't they? Where can they get it early? Sandwich.co. That's right. Mm-hmm. Linked below. S A N D W I C H dot C O, but it is links below. It's nine dollars a month. Which what does that equate to per week? I wish it was a number I could be. Well, that's two fifty a, a week, but it's nine dollars, so I can't it's do that. It's less than two fifty a week. It's less than. It sounds even more. By an amount of money. Uh, yeah, it's really. Right. If you do want to support the show, we'd really appreciate it. Early videos. Uh, uh, I'm also putting up the earlier, the extended versions of the Caravan of Garbage up there, or Collings is because I sent it all over to him. And he sorts that out. So, yeah. Uh, if you, and also a bonus podcast. Uh, we got we got this covered covered. That's right. Where we take the clickbait articles that we see all over the, the, um, the internet and we, and we just make sure that everyone's keep, keeping it together. That's right. Exactly. We, <laughs> we fact check them. We, we run through them with a fine tooth comb. That's right. Mm. We mostly make To see if there's stuff. any facts in them at all. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's what we mean by a fact check. And just to be clear, no snitches. No snitches. No okay. snitches. Hashtag no snitches. <laughs> And plus, we're going to do a commentary a month. So. Oh yeah, so it's uh, yeah three episodes of that every week, and then a commentary. Can we have we spoiled what the commentary is? This? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, yeah it's Rise, Rise of Skywalker. Of Skywalker. That's yeah. right. What do you want to do next? We should right. do Iron Man. I'd love to do Iron Man. Yeah, would you like to do Iron Man? Yeah. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. There we go. So we've been threatening this for months, years. That's a bad way to start this, but all right. That's how I live my life. Just bad starts. Bad starts and threats. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever wondered maybe those those could combine somehow? And- well, we're all here, aren't we? I mean, for now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. We've 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 been talking about how we want to do starter comics for a really long time. A lot yeah. of requests for people they want to get into comics, but where do I go? Exactly. There's a lot of people who you know for a little while. I mean, uh, some would say we're too late on this because a lot of people have been stuck at home for a while and now they're <laughs> going back to work. But what I'm saying is, yes, if 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 we can provide any kind of you know incentive for people to continue to stay home, we mm. should probably do that, and that might be. Comic books, because a lot of people say, "Hey, I like the MCU, I like the DCEU, I like the you know the the Arrowverse uh, TV yeah. shows or something like that." And they're like, "And I would like to get into the comics because I've never read the comics before." But it can be overwhelming because Definitely. you know it looks inaccessible. <laughs> it looks inaccessible. You go to if you go to a comic book shop, especially there's just a just a just a wall of comic books. A swath. There's a swath, and oftentimes, like let's say you want to you want to you're like I want to read about Iron Man. There'll be like issues 16 to 22 on the on the shelf yeah. and you're like is that a, is, good? is that a storyline yeah. or is it sometimes iron man is doctor doom and you're like what does that mean exactly and who's Some, doctor exactly doom? you're like is this is this an entire storyline or, or am i 16 issues in and i won't under, do i have yeah. to buy the back issues what do i exactly kind of do there'll be a big shelf of trade paperbacks graphic mm. novels and you're like okay do i do i have to start at volume one can i start at yeah. volume three you know and a lot of your big events in comics as well that people recommend. They're like, well, you should read Infinite Crisis or Secret Wars or whatever, but they're inaccessible if you don't know what it going on. It involves every yeah. character in that yeah. universe oftentimes. Yeah, exactly. So what we're going to mention today, we're going to start with DC this week. We're going to come back next week and do Marvel. And then we're going to, after that, we're going to do like other things like Image and, and Bits and Pieces and Star Wars and things like all that. The, yeah, exactly. All yeah. the, all the, you know, all the... All the losers. No, I th- for me, a lot of that stuff is the stuff I read the it most, really I would is. say. And in yeah. fact, in a lot of instances... A lot of the indie stuff or image or things like that are often better to you know to to ease yourself in a yes. comic book because 
it's there'll be a standalone series. It's not connected to anything else yep. in the in the you know from Image or you know and, it, and it's finished exactly. It's often you yeah. know ten issues or twenty four issues or yeah. something, and then it's done. Yeah, that's right. And we'll probably talk about some artists and and writers and things like that that do both. Like yep. Jeff Lemire is probably a good example. He he his feet in both worlds. But yeah, do you, well, who do you want to start off with in this? Well, also, I wanted to say just before we do start off, mm. we, yeah, we do, we do want to recommend things that are just easy to dip your toe into. Yeah. And oftentimes the, 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 the problem with a lot of major comic book universes, the Marvel universe, the DC universe is often that the universes are often rebooted or restarted. Yeah. And it'll be a case of like, well, this, the origin of this character was in continuity. It was the official origin of this mm. character a few years ago, but then they changed it yeah. for whatever reason to, to streamline it or to make it more interesting or to make their origin more harrowing or something like that. But I find a lot of these ones, especially some of the ones that I have to recommend, they, they may be a storylines that are no longer in continuity, but they are still a good representation yes. of the characters. So I mean, yeah. ultimately it doesn't matter if, you uh, read a storyline in which um, Batman's parents were killed by a criminal named Joe Chill, yeah. or Batman's parents were killed by an unknown criminal, and we've never we've never yeah. learned who the who the culprit was. It doesn't matter ultimately. No, you that's know? exactly right. So yeah, look, we're probably gonna, not going to mention your favourite comic. We're talking Please to you we specifically. Yeah, we might, but we probably won't. <laughs> we're not going to mention my favourite comic. That's right. We're not going to touch on that. Oh my god. So if we're doing DC, I guess we start with Superman, right? Yes, Would be a good place to start. Uh, uh, we, we might have the same answer. We probably do. Uh, yeah. Superman Birthright. We do have that Mark same Wade answer. Mark Wade and Lionel Francis Yu. Someone who also is going to come up a number of times is Mark Wade because yes. he he is he's a, sort of a comics industry stalwart. He mm. I don't know anything about him really, but comics he, obviously he writes a lot of comics. Yeah, yeah. and and he's um, he seems to be a huge fan of the lore and the the origins of you know he's been in the industry. He's got that encyclopedic knowledge. So I think when people want a fresh start on a character, they come to him and be yeah. like, what, what, what do you got here? And that's what this comic is. Because you get the origin of Superman, which, you know, you'd probably be vaguely familiar with if you don't know anything about him anyway. And it takes it, it takes it through like his journalistic years before he becomes Superman. He's doing some work in Africa how, where he starts the daily planet his involvement with Lex Luthor. There's an alien invasion. He, it's pinned on him. And it's, a, it's like a concise, Probably out out of continuity now. It's out of continuity, of writing, yeah. yeah. But I think it's easily one of the best. Well, cause, so th- this one originally, as I understand it, was not meant to be in continuity ever. It okay. was meant to be like a – so Mark Wade also created Elseworlds. I don't know if you're aware mm. of that. The parallel universe kind of uh, what if Batman was also Green Lantern? You know, what if Superman – Batman was – he fought Jack the Ripper or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> the, he invented the concept of that. He came to DC with that yeah. and they were like, let's do that. Mm. But, yeah, so this version of uh, version of Superman's origin was never intended to be into continuity, but I guess they liked it so much. They like, yeah. well, let's, let's replace the previous one, which came out in 1986, yeah. which was the Man of Steel. And then this one has, again, it's been – replaced again by Superman Secret Origins, which came out about 10 years ago. Okay, sure, yeah. But, but I, don't, I don't even know if I've read that. I may have. But I, I really I really enjoy this. I, and the art in this is phenomenal. So good. It's uh, a guy called Lionel Francis Yu, mm. uh, who you don't often see in comic books. You, you don't often see him doing an ongoing series. Yeah. What generally happens is if he is on an ongoing series, he does it for a half a dozen issues and then someone else takes over mm. because – what he does clearly takes in a, a phenomenal amount of time. Yeah. There's, it's, there's so much detail to his work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do have a few others that I can mention briefly. Uh, su- or, Superman stories. Or do you want to just do no, one please. for each? Yeah. Uh, Superman Secret Identity. Oh, so that is Kurt Busiek is the writer yes. and Stuart Eminem. Whose names I know how to pronounce. Of course you do. <laughs> uh, he's the artist. Uh, t- tell it's, me about this one. And the reason you can jump on board this one is because it's set in a universe where Superman exists in comics and then somebody whose name is Clark Kent happens to get Superman's powers in the real world. And so you don't really – it's a new origin because it's not Superman. It's a different guy. Uh-huh, yeah. And it's just a really interesting tale of kind of – I know it sounds kind of really oh, this again, but what if Superman but in the real world? Sure. But I think it does it really well in a way that is meta but not like hitting you over the head with it. And yeah, it's right, kind of uh-huh. as he gets older and he's – he he doesn't age as Superman does where he kind of stays youthful. He also ages in real time, so that becomes a factor in him – Saving people as well. And it's a good kind of family story as well. It's, yeah, right. It's really great. Another one is uh, Superman for All Seasons by 
Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, whose names also are going to come, come up, up a, a lot. lot yeah. uh, so that's four stories about Superman, but there's one in particular called Sam's Story, which is about Superman has a best friend who dies of cancer, or well, Clark Kent, I should say, mm-hmm. and it's him kind of coming to... Superman term. doesn't have any friends. No. Well, he's just got Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen. Olsen. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's about how they... And the robots in the and Fortress the robots, of Solitude. Of course, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't really like them. They're more of a necessity. They're more, but, his, <laughs> they're more his employees. <laughs> yes, that's right. And they're nice to him, but he knows that if he wasn't paying them, yeah. In oil. They wouldn't be nice to him. <laughs> no. They'd tear him apart. They'd crinkle his cape when That's they right, iron yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But the reason this story is so important, uh, for a number of reasons, firstly, it's about Superman realizing that he can't save everybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other I mean, thing... he could if he tried. He could if... Well, not this guy, but oh, it's yeah. also... Yeah, and the other thing is Jeff Loeb, his son, uh, died of cancer. His name was Sam. Oh, of course, and that's, that's why. Right. So I it's like that. a very personal story as well. Yeah. And again, it's four self-contained stories, and it gives you an idea of who Superman is from a really human perspective. And he also uh-huh. looks like a big thumb. He looks like a big, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, right. cornbread thumb. It's important to get the look right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know? But uh, that sounds like an insult. It's not because they're like, what if like this guy fell from spray? So they just fed him with corn <laughs> his entire life, sure, yeah. corn and bread, and uh-huh. you know, and he's just a big and cornbread and cornbread. Yeah, and that's how it kind of. Turned out. So there you go. That, there you go. So yeah, that, those are all those are all very good choices. I think. Thank man. you. Uh, yeah, Kurt Busiek uh, is responsible for a series called Astro City, mm. which is sort of very much like the loving homage to your classic superhero. You know, your, your various Cape Crusaders. Yes. So that's a very good choice. I think. Well, that's not what we're talking about today, Mason. No, it's not. No, you could have I'll, saved that for maybe, a different no, day. No, I won't. <laughs> I, I'm burning it here. Batman, uh, should we talk about Batman? Sure, I was going to save him till the end. Okay, sure, we can do that. Yeah, because, you know, people like him, don't they? People will hang around. They'll be like, what Batman are stuff? Are you saying are people don't about? like Superman? People don't. I, well, we I start, like Are Superman. we starting out with our second strongest superhero, like the second most favourite superhero? Sure. And then ending with the best one? I prefer Superman, but do you prefer Batman? I prefer whatever you're going to say next. <laughs> okay. Whichever one you say. I was going to say Aquaman. Favorite. Or Aquaman. Yeah, okay. Um, do you want Hook Hand Aquaman I don't from want the hook, 90s? I, do want, I don't want Hook Hand Aquaman. I want sexy Aquaman. I want mm. sex, the sexiest Aquaman in recent memory. Uh, Jason is, Momoa. Well, yeah, but I mean on the on the printed page. Sure, a picture of Jason Momoa. Hey, on the printed page in a newspaper, for example. <laughs> yes. Uh, but if you can't have any of those, if all those were made illegal because they're too sexy. Yeah. The DC Rebirth yeah. uh, series of Aquaman written by Dan Abnett. Yes. Who is responsible for the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, mm. uh, relaunch many, many years ago. Mm. Uh, he's really, really good. And speaking of sexy, uh, volume four of that series is by illustrated by a guy called Stepan Sejic. Mm-hmm. And... Sexy characters in that one. The art, is ph- the art is phenomenal. And sexy, yeah? Yeah, but that, that's uh, off the top of my head. It's called, oh, man. Uh, uh, it's called Aquaman Underworld. So it's okay. volume four of that. Okay, cool. Uh, and it's and only, you could start at that, would you say? I think you could, or yeah. Or get to it. Yeah, I mean, you start, at, start at volume yeah. one if, if, you, mm. if you desire to. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, 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 just rollicking adventures yes. and him fighting, you know, because he's a royal, so he's fighting eco-terrorism, but he's also fighting, you know, other other factions of the yeah. uh, you know Ad- Atlantis noble blood and that sort of stuff absolutely and that's what you want you want you want spectacular that's the thing and I I, I think with your Aquaman mm. I feel you need you need a reason to be down in the ocean yes uh, you need spectacular visuals because that's the thing the, mm. the people are like well what's he doing down there talking to fish well yes obviously. <laughs> But also, I think you need you need to show the spectacular nature of you know underwater because yeah. it's it's chaos down it's there. It's a it's a vast you know it's a vast swath of the Earth's surface, and you you want to there, there's stuff down there. Yeah, absolutely. You know? If we're talking like restarts of Aquaman, the yes. new Fifty Two run, Jeff uh-huh. Johns, Ivan Rice kind of brought him back into popularity, uh-huh. where it kind of it pokes fun a lot of the things that people make fun of him for. It's like talking the, to fish. Like talking to fish. Like he shows like up. I just did and will continue <laughs> That's to do. Right. I don't but, care what a comic book tells me to do. <laughs> that he shows up at the start and he stops a bank robbery and they're like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I also work on land. If I'm yes, in the area. that's true. You know, but it also shows that... I should be called All-Terrain Man. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't say that. <laughs> but it also shows that how strong he should is. should be called ATM. ATM. All-Terrain right. Man. But, you know, because he's got incredibly tough skin because of the ocean depths that he has to mm-hmm. endure. He's not like Superman tough, but and he's it does a good job of highlighting that. He's got very tough skin because of all the insults as well. All the insults, exactly. He's got yeah. tough skin physically and emotionally. Mm. This is one that I don't have a lot for, and the one I'm suggesting would probably wouldn't be a good starting point. But oh, what great. Would you, what would you say for Flash? You were going to say Flashpoint, I've got to say, I haven't read a lot of Flash. Yeah. So I couldn't really... I'd, I, I know some team-up books where we could talk about a different week that I'm like, uh-huh. oh, he's really good in that Justice League run or whatever. Mark Wade did a great Flash run in like uh, 
Oh, a, a million years ago in a the million 90s, years I think. Ago. Yeah. Okay. Flashpoint, though, I don't know whether it's a good starting point, but it, it does because it's a re, they kind of rejig the timeline of the universe, which leads into a reboot of everything. And yes, it's flashed exactly. on no. to prevent the death of his mother. It's good, but I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'd it'd be the first thing to jump in on. No, yeah. no. Yeah, look, Mark Wade wrote one in the 90s, which he did it for like eight years. Mm-hmm. Really, really good. It focuses mostly on Wally West. Yeah, right. He's got his big tin hat. That's Jay Garrick. Oh, no. You <laughs> absolute goose. I've, I've, I've shown my hand here, haven't I? <laughs> it's true. What am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, there, there is a new 52 version yes. uh, of The Flash from about 2011. Uh, Francis Manipool uh, on writing, Brian Bucciolato, uh on art, and that was part of the New 52. You don't really need any backstory again. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I guess that was also the point of New 52. We also yes. also should mention you could just read the first comics, I guess, oh, but a lot of the time yeah. they're kind, they, they definitely come across as quaint and simple. They are very, yeah. But exactly. the core yeah, ideas yeah, are yeah. there. But any kind of rebirth, New yeah. 52, yeah, yeah. any of that stuff, you can jump on board. And the, for this particular version is very much in step with the Arrowverse version of The Flash. Okay. So this version, it's the one where he is trying to prove... Jay Garrick. No, but he is He's in He's got that. the tin hat. No, that's a, diff- <laughs> it's a different guy. But in, in a way, it's the same guy because it's the guy who played The Flash yes. in the TV series in the... He played Barry Allen in the TV series. In the Dawson's so, dad. So you are, in fact, correct in this, <laughs> in this one very specific instance. But in this one, it, the, the, the plot of some early seasons of the TV series was that he was trying to prove... That his father didn't murder his mother. Yeah. And, uh, and it turns out he did. No, it's no. It's <laughs> no, he not, didn't. It's he didn't. No, it. James, no. But it was, uh, it was Jay Garrick. No, it wasn't. <sighs> James, you're confusing me. He does and, a lot of time was, travel. That's true, he does. But he does less of it in this. Yeah. Uh, and it's sort of like a younger version of Barry Allen, but not like the, the very, very beginning. Okay, so sure. That, that's a pretty good run, I think. Cool. Yeah, okay. It's a good cool. solid run. Excellent. I remember liking that one. Should we do some Wonder Woman? What do you got? I've got a few here. Go ahead. Uh, popular one, uh, which I enjoy, is Sensational Comics featuring Wonder Woman by Gail Simone. Uh, Greg Rucker's done a lot of work, uh, including Rebirth with Nic- Nicola Scott as well. <laughs> but the one, uh, what are you laughing at? I've never heard anyone pronounce Nicola that way. It's Nicola. Is it? C-O-L-A. Oh. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Okay, then. <laughs> but that's how it's spelled. <laughs> uh, but one I read recently, which I also really enjoyed by Gail Simone, is Wonder Woman The Circle. Oh, yes. And... It sort of delves into a little bit about her origin, but it's essentially about, uh, without spoiling it, Wonder Woman uh, is, is left Themyscira for reasons that we don't find out immediately. Her mother has locked up her four bodyguards uh-huh. for reasons that you find out later. And it's got Nazis trying to invade Themyscira and Wonder Woman comes back with a pack of gorillas uh, <laughs> to fight them all off. <laughs> and it's really cool and great. So uh-huh. Wonder Woman, The Circle. Uh, by Gail Simone is is really fun. Yeah, mm. uh, it's it's well worth it. Mm. I mean, you know, it kind of you know it kind of kind of blunts the impact of girl power if you also need gorilla power. Doesn't say whether they're men or women, Mason. Well, I've been I've been shown up and I'm <laughs> and I've been shown the door. That's real. That's real. I mean, yeah, women yeah. Can they're from girl. Gorilla City, by the way. Gorillas can be women as well. That's, that's, that's right. That's, true. that's oh my god, you're right. That's yeah. So wow. yeah, they're they're talking gorillas from Gorilla City, mm, okay. which she 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 gets on her side. Uh, she takes them from Gorilla Grodd. Yeah, okay. she convinces them. So. I guess I wasn't, I didn't think they were regular gorillas. Sure. Well, they're not. They're not regular gorillas. She's like, I brought this army of gorillas. <laughs> oh, they just want to just hang out in the trees and that. They've all just run out in the, into the bush. I don't know yeah. why I did this. You got anything for Wonder, Wonder Woman? Woman? I'm not overly familiar with the work yeah. of Wonder Woman. I would say, Steph, if, I mean, you you know Wonder Woman, so I'm I would say of... definitely give that one a read. Okay, it's cool. really great. Yeah. I uh, mean, you've spoiled it with that whole gorilla thing. But there's more things happening. I didn't spoil all of it. Okay, good. I didn't spoil the reason. Why did her four bodyguards turn on her is what I'm saying. Why do they want to kill the Wonder Woman? It's probably because she's constantly just talking about gorillas and how much she wants a pet gorilla. <laughs> and like, this want- will be so much more work for us, Wonder Woman. There's a moment where they're hanging out in their apartment. It's really fun. Oh it's like that scene from Ninja Turtles 2. Remember that movie? Yeah, of course I do. You remember that. Where they had the gorillas in the Ninja Turtles apartment. Mm-hmm. You remember. Uh, so do you want to do Green Lantern then? Sure. Not something that I'm entirely familiar with as well. My Green Lantern knowledge is limited at best, but what do you got? I got one in particular. Shoot. Uh, Earth One Green Lantern by Gabriel Hardman and Karina Beckko. Is that the one where Green Lantern... There's no more Green Lanterns, but then there's one more Green Lantern turns up. And Go on. Gets a Green Lantern ring, but the ring doesn't work very well. And they're like, the power of the Green Lantern has faded f- from the universe. But then maybe you find out 
why that is the case. And maybe they need more green lanterns. So it's not tied to any of the other continuity. Well, I should mention this for all of them because there's Earth One books for like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and they they keep making them. Um, They they keep rolling them out and they're retellings of their origins which set – are set separately in their own universes. Uh And they're all pretty decent jumping off points. But this one uh, really stuck out to me because I'm not a huge Green Lantern fan. I'm like, oh, yeah, I like this this series enough. I'll give it a go. But it might be my favorite one from the uh, Earth One series. Again, set entirely apart. It's a completely different origin and it doesn't tie in anything else, but it's a a good jumping off point for the character. Or you could watch Green Lantern 2011 and you get a really good idea of what's going on. (laughs) Right. In that universe. Well, I guess, guess, yeah, I mean, going into – because and the thing about Green Lanterns is there are – you know, it's a it's a it's essentially a you know an inter intergalactic space police yeah. force. So there are so many Green Lanterns. The you know it's four. There's more than James. There's seven. No, <laughs> James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of them. Yeah. So I guess you could focus really on any of the Green Lanterns. Yeah. But the main man of Green Lantern universe, the top cop, the top gun, yeah. is Hal Jordan. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's Kyle Rayner. No, it's Jay Garrick. James. <laughs> James, no. James. Uh, I'm just trying to I'm just gonna keep making that joke so people forget mm-hmm. the real the real reason, you know, that I started doing it is because I got the name of the flash wrong and people call me a <laughs> fake fan, but I'm 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 incepting everybody. Be like, oh that's a funny bit that he's doing. But, but James, it, your revelation now has ruined that. You're gonna have to start again. No, no, I am gonna start again, and by the time we get to the end, people are gonna forget this. Oh <laughs> damn, that's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> Look, uh, Jeff Johns has a great run on on Greenland. If we're going to talk about sure. the, the beginnings of Greenland, or just just a just a fresh start, uh, it's it's real good. But it does also it does feature Kyle Rayner as well. Yeah. So the, to say they're a mismatch buddy cop team, they're not. They barely <laughs> they they don't interact. But no, they certainly don't. But they have some good times together, don't they? Do you want to do? Uh, <laughs> do you want to do Green Arrow? Oh, uh, got some great. I got one in particular that I really like. Uh, tell me about it. Uh, it's called uh, Green Arrow by Je- uh, The Kill Machine. That's <laughs> called by Green Arrow. Yeah, The Kill Machine by Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. Or yes, tell me Sorrentino. about Sorrentino. It. Uh, it's, it's like a murder mystery thing. It's uh, kind of, you know, he's he's up. I, from, I met it a long time ago, but he's up up against like assassins and, you know, he's, he's Batman. If He's Batman with a bow and arrow in his city. That's the he's thing. He's doing about, the best he can. That's the thing about uh, Green Arrow is yeah. that do you want – do you want a version that is just Batman but yeah. arrows or do you want – I think this is like a, a walks a, a, a good line uh-huh. for this as well. So, yeah, I, I really – and again, it's Jeff Lemire. So he does terrific work. So you, you can't really go wrong uh, for that one. Do you, do you have a green arrow or is that the greenest arrow we're going to get out of this? There's one from the 80s. Mm. It's called The Longbow Hunters and it just it came out, yeah, like 1987 or 1988 or something like that. Yes. Uh, and it was written and illustrated by a called Mike Grell. Right. Who he's best known for, I'd say best known for, and then I blank on it. He's best, <laughs> he's best known for like this space warlord kind of character. I think the character might even just be named the warlord. Okay, sure. But it's basically Green Arrow and Black Canary versus like a like a like a drug ring and a like a like an opposing evil archer. And okay. it's just the, the I remember the art being phenomenal. And it's uh, just 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 some primo stuff. And it's three issues. So if you don't like it, I do like uh, it. Okay, cool. I like your explanation of uh-huh. it. D- definitively. I think it was an Eisner Award, either nominee or a winner. Oh, so. wow. You seem to know a lot about this thing you vaguely remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? I'm going to look up Mike Grell because I'm like, okay, I'm going to. You should. You should yeah. look up Mike Grell. Uh, Cyborg. The Warlord. It was called The Warlord. It was called, there okay, you right. are. You were right. You uh-huh. knew what you were doing. The, I, th- I think Mike Grell also did the version of the, the, the Green Arrow, Green Lantern miniseries from, from like the 80s, which is basically – them sort of walking across America and and discovering various injustices that they can't solve with with arrows and big green boxing gloves. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I mm. get you. I get you. I get you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I was going to say for Cyborg again, not something I uh, I have a lot of experience with. You could go back to the Teen Titans because that's where the character started, like the origins of that. You could watch the new Justice League movie. He's in that movie, isn't he? Mm. Uh, he's got a new Fifty Two run. Uh, but the what I one that I've recently been enjoying, and it's a team book, so it doesn't really count. But deceased, the oh yes, uh-huh. the DC Zombies book is entirely based around the cyborgs, the Ground Zero, like the kicking off point for the virus because it's a technological virus. Yeah, right. And he's also a major player in that series. That being said, it's it's a team up book where it's the DC characters in a different universe and there's zombies. So <laughs> yeah, it's, right. not, it's not a great jumping off point, but I think he's really well done in that. I feel 
Cyborg, and then, and again, maybe I'm wrong here, but I feel like Cyborg has yet to have really his his chance to shine in the modern day. Yeah, because he's he like I think he's a character who's you know underused mm. in the past, and they've sort of because you know they put him in the movie, and they're like sort yeah. of sort of you know like scurrying to to put him in comic books and stuff like that as a result, and they're like, okay, well, what what is his defining yeah series? And I can't really recall him having a rocket boots. Rocket boots. Yes. Rocket <laughs> Cyborg boots. Cyborg and the quest for rocket boots. You think of Astro Boy. He's got rocket boots too. I know. Cyborg's defining characteristic is that his dad wouldn't let him, wouldn't go to his football game, so he grabbed something out of a particle accelerator and exploded or something. Wasn't that the, some of the, sometimes the origin? That is sometimes the origin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want to come to your football games because you're an idiot, because you're grabbing things out of particle accelerators. He's very smart. No, he is. You're right. Except for that one time. The one time with the particle accelerator. That he reached inside the particle accelerator or whatever it was. <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we do Batman unless you've got some other DC characters. Because we could also do villains, but I feel like that's another thing entirely. Yeah, you right know, right Joker on. books and Harley books and, you know, Mr. Freeze origins and whatever. But yeah, it's huh. something we could look at a different day. Uh-huh. Uh, so, but do you want to do Batman? Or Let's do talk wanna... about Batman, yeah. Okay, cool. So this is one I've got. Oh, maybe not the most. I've got a lot, got a lot of recommendations here. The big one is, of course, Frank Miller, Year One, mm-hmm. Jumping Off Point. Everybody knows that. That's a good – if you've seen Batman Begins, it's like the Batman Begins. Of, yeah, the, I mean the the, the the ones we're going to recommend here, I think it's probably – it's probably the – we've got at least two crossovers here. Mm. But they're very uh, – it's irrelevant when they came out. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter the tiny specifics, the nuances of his origin or what have you. Yes. They're just – they're very uh, – they're, they're quite timeless, I think. But, yeah, and, completely and, great, yeah. Batman Year One – is is very timeless. The art's great. He kicks down a tree. He does kick down a tree. Yeah, yeah. it's very. Uh, yeah, it's 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 just a tremendous origin story. It's mm. uh, it's it's as the name suggests, it's Batman in his first year of his career, and it's just kind of just he's figuring it out. He's figuring it out sometimes. And very he's bad very, at it. <laughs> yeah, he's quite quite poorly at times. He yeah. gets stabbed. <laughs> he does get stabbed at least once. Yeah. yeah. No, so I think that's a that's a kind of a. A given, but for other more modern, I was going to say, it's, yeah. it, there's a very, there's a, there's a Batman Year One is one of the ones that you know a lot of more recent origin stories have definitely very heavily borrowed from the movies yeah. and 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 TV shows and things like that. And there is an animated movie as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. which I hate, but <laughs> I like it. It does, doesn't work. Doesn't work animated, but uh, kicks yeah. down the tree in that too. Yes, I'm very well aware. <laughs> but it's kind of, and you get to see. The early methods of his of, of developing his persona and things like that, yeah. like you know, if he wants to put the fear of God in some in some mobsters, he'll he remembers to set up a little floodlight yeah. outside their their headquarters, and then he sets up his smoke bombs. He's all he, about the theatrics. And then, he, then he blows a hole through yeah. the wall, and he's like, "Okay, now he's got his speech. Look at my look at my. He's got his speech ready. He's like, look yeah. at my spooky silhouette." People and got a, yep. very upset because Kevin Smith made a follow-up story where he talks about that and he pissed his pants in that moment. He was too close to the explosion. Oh, right, and it, yeah, like, right. And it just got yes, upset like a course. ripple through his bladder and he pissed his pants. And people are like, you made Batman piss his pants. I bet Batman pisses his pants most nights. Well, I mean, he's just up there on that <laughs> rooftop, you know. Uh, and there's a great, there's a very tense uh, standoff with the police towards the end where he's trapped in a yeah. tenement building, which is Not really Not dissimilar weird. from Batman Begins, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, where yeah. he's like, you know, and his, his utility belt's burnt up. So yeah. he can't rely on his most of his gadgets and his gimmicks, and he's just got a you know, he's got a reason. gun. <laughs> he's just got a regular gun. <laughs> I think the the, the Batman Year Two or Batman Year Three, which were follow ups that weren't written by Frank Miller, he does sort of struggle with this idea of why don't I just use a gun? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. That would be so cool, super cool. Yeah, but uh, for, uh, as far as other stories, something more modern, the New Fifty Two run, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo. I guess the only thing about this is it does introduce the entire Bat family pretty much all at once. Yeah, right. But it is mainly Batman focused, and it's new villains. So you do get with the Court of Owls, but then over the, over the run, uh, which is only sort of recently wrapped up because he keeps coming back to the to, to this universe. He's kind yeah, of right. they've uh-huh. kind of been on and off it. But you get the Court of, Court of Owls, you get the Joker, you know, you get a bunch of other stuff, and it's just a really fun and modern retelling. Yeah, uh, it's it, it instantly for me. It became like, oh, this is one of the best Batman stories. I think it is, but I, yeah, I think you're right in the sense that I think this should be a second port of call for this character. Sure, yeah. In the sense that, yeah, it, there is there are so many. He's got eight Robins, and exactly, yeah, yeah. and the, the same with Hush, yes. which is a, a series in which Batman is being, uh, Batman is being kind of you know pursued. 
He's being pursued and, and threatened by a mysterious new villain called Hush. He's dropped his gun. He's got the, <laughs> he's he's in trouble. He can't just shoot or everyone he comes his way. And that's great because the art by Jim Lee is really, really good. Yeah, it's terrific. And it's sort of, it, again, it is sort of this rolling roster of all his major Rogues villains. And, and other, like Superman's in it. And yeah, whatever, and it's, yeah. Kind of like, it's, it's kind of like, well, we've got Jim Lee. Let's do this amazing showcase of all these characters. Yeah. The problem is it does rely on you knowing yeah. specific lore about Batman's past and yeah. previous Robins and all this sort of stuff, and it's a little bit confusing. I think. I think though it's one of those things where if you if you're listening to this, mm-hmm. you probably have a base understanding of all oh, yeah, these characters sure. yeah, yeah. from you know the TV shows and the movies and whatever. So I feel like some of these they're like oh it might be a bit inaccessible. You probably have enough kind of peripheral knowledge to kind of go in on a lot of these. Yeah, that's ones. probably true. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Like it's a great book. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the villain is fairly obvious, which I won't, won't spoil here. But it's it's a it's a good journey, and that's what it's about, isn't it? It's one of Batman's many gunshot victims. <laughs> yes, that's He's right. back for revenge. Uh, this uh, this is just a standalone issue, and I don't know why I put it in because it's certainly not something you could just jump in oh, on. it's one issue. It's, uh, it's Batman 21. It's more recent. It's Batman versus the reverse Flash. So okay. it's basically Batman versus Batman, a man, and he's dropped his gun against a super speedster supervillain. So he's basically, the, if you don't know the Flash, but he's bad. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I just need to survive. He's got that metal helmet. <laughs> yes. What? No, Mason, you're doing my bit. <laughs> uh, but it's it's Batman trying to survive for, I can't remember the exact time, but for like 14 seconds before the Flash turns up and saves him. So it's just oh, him I keeping see. it, trying to stay alive and using everything he can. And he's not going to win, but he's like, I just need to just keep breathing until That's the Flash shows okay. up. Yeah. So, and then it leads into uh, Martian Manhunter, not Martian Manhunter. Dr. Manhattan? Dr. Manhattan. And oh, this is the, bu- this is the button. The button. Okay, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. I've got it. So I'm, I'll track that out. So it's, so it's Batman... 21, issue 21. It's, it's inaccessible. Oh, I don't know like, why I brought it no, up. But like a up. volume whatever, volume 14 or whatever. whatever I can't version. remember. I've just, I've just got it in my comic. That's, also a, that's also a confusing thing about getting into comics is they are major comic companies are very big on renumbering things. Yeah. And I, I think the idea is that it's meant for ease of use. You go, oh, there's yeah. a new Iron Man number one. Yes. But vol- volume what? I don't know anymore. But also for a lot of these, I'm like, I remember that. And then I go to look up, I'm like, I need to know who the artist for this is and the writer. I want to get that right. And you Google it and it's just, you get you get movies and TV shows and, and different issues that were also named Batman, whatever. Yeah, it's, right. a, uh-huh. it's a nightmare. But yeah, I do have some other ones, but you, you've got some more things. Ah, uh, The about. Long Halloween. It's terrific. It is, it's I, terrific. And there's a reason we constantly mention it on this show. It's, it's 13 spooky issues. It also feels to me more like a natural... Uh, continuation of Batman Year One. It does, it feels yeah. Early days, and, and it's and it has yeah. you know it has Harvey Dent before he's been transformed into uh, Two Face. Mm. It's got uh, it's got the 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 Roman uh, Carmine Falcone, like yes. the, the 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 mob crime family that that Batman has beef with. Yes, and it's yeah, and it does have like your Jokers and your Catwomans and yeah. whatever, but it's all it's all you'll get it. it yeah, and again, yeah. it is sort of it's a it's a murder mystery. Yeah, of and sorts. it is sort of like the you know the Batman animated series in that it has sort of a sort of retro yeah. styling to it. I really like it, but mm. it doesn't. That doesn't mean it it isn't always kind of timeless. Yeah, like if you can once you settle into kind of like the wide lapel zoot suit kind of mobster yeah. you know uh, aesthetic. Then you're like, oh, okay, it's, uh, it's this is a very timeless crime story and cool, and co- it is cool. It also has a sequel called Dark Victory, yeah, which I would, it's, I guess it's probably not as good, but <laughs> they, yeah, no, I'd say it is. They flow onto each other, yeah, and they work really well as companion pieces. And that one also introduces Dick Grayson mm. as as a young boy, boy wonder Robin. So he's just a he's just a little lad, the guy with the metal tin on his head, exactly. Before he becomes, you know, older. Robin and Nightwing yeah, right, and uh-huh. so on and so forth. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really I, – I go back to that probably every year and reread that because it's, it's definitely one of my faves, yeah. And, again, it is – I guess the difference between this and the New 52 one is it does feel more timeless in the way that it approaches the characters. Yeah. So I'd say you'd probably – if you haven't read anything, I'd say go year one and then go uh, Long Halloween, Dark Victory, yeah. I would say. And then the one where he gets beaten up by Reverse Flash. <laughs> Yeah. That's the order you should do it in. Yeah, I guess that is the the problem oftentimes with rebooting some of the stuff is that it's the urge to make it as fresh as humanly possible yeah. kind of thing. And, then you know, they the trap is, oh, my God, who's this new superhero? He's appearing on all the social media. <laughs> yes. He's on... Yeah, he's, he's on Twitter. He's, he's blowing he's up. On tw- he's blowing up on Twitter <laughs> yeah. and Instagram. You know, because they can't use for some reason they yeah. can't just say the, the real ones. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also the new Rob Bat Bat and Bat Batman movie is maybe 
based on some of these elements? Yeah, we don't know for we sure. Know We've been yeah. saying it so often we believe that it is the truth. Yeah, maybe we started that. Yeah, maybe we started. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. But look, if people have any recommendations, if you could, you know, we yeah. email them in, leave them in the comments below. We obviously have blind spots. Yeah, and, so. al- and also there, there are things that I really love that I held off mentioning because I'm like, oh, that's not really a – that seems insane to recommend that straight yeah, up. Like yeah, like there's a gre- there's a Green Lantern comic that I read some years ago. Where his whole city's destroyed and he goes mad? No, but that's that that I have read that one also. <laughs> but it's it's a it's a Kyle Rayner story, but it's more like this this huge overarching mm. uh like war story and it's uh can't what what is the name of it? I don't know. You're telling the story, mate. I You're telling the bloody <laughs> story, mate. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, it's called the Amiga Man. Oh, mentioned it in the past. It's Carl Rayner teams up with some of this intergalactic space force called the Amiga Man. Well, when we do insane comic book arcs that are completely inaccessible, we can talk more about the Amiga Man. This is hardly wait. the time. Basically. Somebody somebody check a box right there. Somebody put that on my to-do list because I'm excited for that one. It's really, really good. Uh, and again, it's sort of like it's sort of like the realities of war painted against yeah. insane, you yeah. know, cosmic space battles. But that one's a really good one. But again, it's you have to know who the Amiga Men are and which Green Lantern Carl Rayner is and, yeah. and and so many things. But. Absolutely. But look, yeah, if people could leave comments below, that would be great because if, if you are looking for something and there's, you know, and for more than what we've talked about, uh-huh. somebody will mention something great yeah. in the comments. Maybe just like the name and where you can find it and just a brief description, I guess. Something we've mentioned on here mm. many many a time, speaking of DC, uh, but I don't know if, I don't know how accessible it is. It's, mm. it's the Mr. Miracle limited series from a few years ago. Yeah, 12 yeah issues. I don't think it is. I think no. it's great, but yeah, it's yeah. so weird. That, well, that's the thing because, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you're getting into comics, you should read Watchmen. And mm. Watchmen is great. Yeah. But it's pretty It's pretty heavy. Yeah. And it's kind of... Like it's a big book. You have to lift it with your little very, arms. Exactly. <laughs> you are not wrong. Mm. It's physically very heavy and also... It sort of relies on you being familiar with the tropes of yeah. superheroes, specifically the ones from the forties and the fifties yeah, and the sixties. Absolutely, and and it's it's more geared towards if you love comics, then you will love this kind of thing. And, you'll, yeah. and I think that Mister Miracle is fairly self-contained. Like a, he's a you know a relatively minor character in the DC universe compared to say Batman or Superman. Yeah. Uh, but then you might be like, why is his wife giant? Why is this person trying to steal his baby? Well, Who are I these mean, people rolling the, in? Yeah, is this guy's he, brother or no, not his here's brother? The thing, but I think those have, I th- but I think that's all fairly well explained in the text. I just sure. think you do, you don't necessarily need to know who Mister Miracle is to enjoy it. Mm. You don't need to know the origin of, but it is a very it's a it's quite heavy. Yeah, it's, heavy. it's not light and fluffy. It's like no. it's it's imagine this wild cosmic battle, but the main character who who is you know. A, a, a general in this wild cosmic battle for the fate of reality is also really depressed all the time <laughs> yeah. due to various things in his life. Yeah, yeah circumstances absolutely. in his life. Yeah, so that's really good. But again, if you if you if that's you, your first foray in a comic, you might be like, "This is something." That's right. You know? Anyways, that's it. Should we go to the next segment of the show? Let's do that. What are we reading? Bah, 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 bah. You got to say what we're going to read. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Bah, 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 bah. I'm doing the thing. Bah, da, da, bah, da, bah, da, bah. Westworld. <laughs> Mixing it up, Mason. Oh, you, you by saying the word, but saying it slightly differently. I see. What are you Westworlding today? Ah, uh, well, this week I'm in a Westworld, and by that I mean play uh, the Last of Us. Yes, Part One. That's right. <laughs> because uh, PS4 copy, though. I have a PS4. I know, but I'm telling you. Yes. The listener. Oh yes. I mean, I'm pointing at you, mm-hmm. but you're also a listener. I'm so confused. <laughs> this is not putting him in the right yeah. frame of mind. They remastered it a little bit for PS4 because it was a PS3 game. Oh, it was I the last see. Gen time. Right, but right, it gotcha. looks great. Okay. You won't be able to tell. Yeah, because uh, The Last of Us Part Two is out this week, and That's I right. haven't played the original. And I said I was going to last week, but then twist. I didn't take it off your shelf. That's right. So this week you physically went over to your shelf and you took it from the shelf and you gave it to me. So it's literally in my hand. Will I remember to take it with me as I leave tonight? Who's to say? And did I put the disc in it? No, I didn't. <laughs> so this is going to be an ongoing saga. Nope, it's in there. <sighs> Definitely in there. I did know that because I look after my games. And except for that one. The one you snapped in half? No, I didn't snap it in half, You actually. failed to snap it in half. Yeah, the one you Thanks failed to snap Thanks for bringing that up. No problem. <laughs> love, love, love to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have been playing this part two. Mm-hmm. I'm probably 10 or so hours into it. Uh-huh. I know there's been some controversy in terms of story elements for this game. And maybe there's some stuff later on in the game where I'm like, well, this is out of line for these characters. But I'm really enjoying it from a story perspective. Because mm-hmm. there is uh, the, the character from the first game, Ellie, uh, Ellie mm-hmm. is, which it also is hinted at in that game and also in the DLC for that. She's a gay character, and this that's explored in this, and they do they do some things with previous characters, which some people may or may not agree with. But all in all, I'm really enjoying the story of it. It pl- it's pl- it's like an extension of the first one. Do you want me to just talk about this for a little bit? Sure, go sure. For it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like an extension from the first. Because one. my enthusiasm <laughs> for playing The Last of Us Part One is waning very quickly, as it oh, often good, good. does. And it's slowly falling out of my grip. So if you could tell me about The Last of Us Part 2, then maybe I'd be encouraged to, to in sure. fact play the first one. absolutely. So I, I'm enjoying the story. The encounters with enemies I think are good because they're all they're more mixed up. It used to be kind of like, oh, you go into a sewer and you're like, okay, so there's going to be some zombies. And you come out and you're like, okay, you're going to walk for a bit and talk and then there's going to be some guys. And then you go back into uh, a building and there's zombies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they mix it up a little bit more, which I, I find more interesting. But it also, I, I th- find the gameplay loop a bit repetitive because it's a yeah, lot right. of like, Okay, you got to kill all these guys. Okay, you got to kill all the zombies. Like it, it does feel the story does help break it up a bit, but I do find it a, like it can be a bit monotonous at times. But they do break it up with action mm. set pieces, which I think work really well. I read a criticism on the internet of, mm. about it this week: is that it's one of the it's a it's a game where once you leave an area, you sort of can't come back. Yeah, the from, area. So yeah. if you're one of those people who likes to get all the the, the yeah. achievements and you want to collect all the collectibles and stuff, yeah, you might play it for a little bit and then like, okay, we're off to the new thing. And you're like, oh, what what about my what's my achievements? Where where'd they go? Oh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. I think you can sort of tell when the next area is going to be kind of triggered. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. you, There's more. It's more. It's a little bit more open world, so you'll be in like a larger space and you can loot the stores oh, and yeah, right, while right, you right, go right. around. Which I don't love, but it's it, it's part of it, and it's less annoying than I find it for other games. It feels less like busy work and more like. Well, I need these parts because I need to make the Molotov cocktails and the ammunition yeah, right, right. for the next encounter. And there's things like when you can I, – I, there's like a good moment in that I really liked. I was in an underground kind of space and bad guys were looking for me with flares. Uh-huh. But there were also some zombies, so I just threw a Molotov cocktail in the middle, middle of them and they just all killed each other. I just <laughs> walked on out. And Felt satisfying? Yeah, yeah it did. So that's, what, that's what you want, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and yeah. there's little things like uh, – I think it's too graphic uh, in, in the way that – it's interesting because I was I was seeing some stuff about this. I think it was on a Jim Sterling video where uh-huh. they talk about how when you can like because you cut people's throats like a lot in this, you do yeah. it to most people. It's a, it's a desperate it's a desperate yeah. world to be in. Yeah, and they apparently they made well they didn't make but it was in the in the Naughty Dog kind of uh, in the offices. People had to then go look online and like look up graphic horrible imagery of people being hung and murdered and. What happens if an arrow hits you? Oh, and yeah, what happens right. if you, yeah, yeah. You know, a shotgun takes off half your face? Well, when I got here, you were playing mm. it and you did put an axe into axe. somebody's shoulder. Yeah. It really, it really yeah. got in there. And it, look, it all looks great, but I, I, I can't help when I see that now. I think of like, oh, a person spent like 100 hours looking at horrible yeah. real life footage when I yeah, feel yeah. like I don't need this to look exactly like an axe going into somebody. No, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's interesting as well. Like there is a, there is a, like an, when you really sort of drill down, you think about this sort of stuff, you mm. know, it's kind of like, it's, it's a little much. Yeah. What I'm saying. You know? Yeah. And look, <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm not one to be like video games that should be censored or whatever. You no, can put no, this stuff in sure. a video game. I don't give a shit, but it's more about who you, who you're showing these to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it comes down to parenting to, you know, I wouldn't never show my kid that like that's insane, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's, the psychological damage that you're doing to a team of professionals, yeah, for sure. On top of crunch, which apparently they did as well, yeah, yeah. Which I don't, <laughs> it's true, don't yeah. like. So I don't know. Well, maybe I, getting it through faster, it shoots it out of their brain faster. Maybe it does in the end. So I don't know. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to mention just quickly. Yes. Also, when you're encounter, encountering enemies, if you kill one, they'll they they call each other's names. So they're like, "Oh no, John, yeah. he's dead," and then uh-huh. they've all they all know each other. Yeah, so well, it kind of feels like, "Oh, I'm killing real people well, here." Yeah, yeah. 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 So, which um, I think is all part of it, though. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, as, as an experience, yeah. it's yeah. kind of like the the. But that's the thing. Do you do you think by the end of this you'll be like, did I did I learn something from this, or did I as an experience? Yeah, are you I don't like, know. This is a, this because you know you want to you know when you play just a regular action mm. game, there's like like that catharsis of like yeah, yeah. shooting everything and blowing yeah. up buildings or whatever. At the end of this, aren't you, you, there's a, there's a there's a very real chance you'll be like. Oof, this was this took a toll. Yeah. Well, funny you should mention that because that's kind of like what that first game hinges on. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to spoil it because it's got a really great ending. Would you say it's rated R for high impact violence? Yes, yeah. very much so. Okie dokie then. But uh, yeah, I would say I would recommend pushing through to, to 
experiencing okay. the ending of that game because and it also sets up this next game Ooh, which, I'm, a sequel. which none of which i can spoil uh but yeah it does kind of ask those questions that are like we just murdered a lot of people like it's that kind of and there's yeah, ramifications right. in the next game kind of for Ooh. that so yeah I, I like it and again mm. i haven't finished it so i might come back next week and be like I just shivved a lot of people over 30 hours <laughs> right. and I got sick of it. Yeah, but right. um, at the moment I like it, yeah. Mm. It doesn't, it's not, inc- it's it's enough like crafting and stealth. Mm. It's just at my level because I feel like a lot of the time it yeah. feels like, oh, I hate crafting. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you kind of do it on the fly and it's mm. a fairly basic setup, which I quite like. Like you kind of know what everything is and you need everything. So, yeah, right. Um, yeah, it's really it's a good. Maybe the yeah. further you play, the more deep and detailed the relationships between the enemies become. Yeah. Just to just to test your your yeah. conscience, there'll be somebody who gets stabbed. You'll be like, "Oh, it's John. We play bridge every Wednesday. <laughs> oh my god, he named his kid after me. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, potentially it wouldn't Maybe. it wouldn't surprise me. But I would say the jump for this would be is more like Uncharted two to Uncharted three. And say Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2. Mm. If you played the Uncharted games, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, but Uncharted 1 is like a pretty basic third-person shooter. Yeah, yeah. The second one is a huge jump. Mm. And then 3 is like, it's good, but it's much of the same. And I feel like 2 is, mm. the second one of this is the same in the sense of the last one. It's like a Speaking natural. of huge jumps, mm. Uncharted has a lot of them. Yes, and you can jump in this. Oh, that is big because there's no jumping. Ties in the it first. all together. Well, there's no jumping in the first game, so this they bring in a jumping mechanic and people are like, it's pointless. And it kind of is. You don't really need it. Um, I don't need like specific points, but anyway. I what see. else are you reading? That's what uh, I've you know. What, actually, uh, in a in a bizarre change of pace, I'm reading a book this week. What do you, uh, you think about that? I don't like it, Mason. I don't, <laughs> I like don't know it. if I like it either. <laughs> what but, book are you uh, reading? It's called Infinite Detail. It's by uh, an author called Tim Morn. Mm. Uh, there's the cover. Very Ooh, splashy. That's not uh, infinite detail. No, it's. I mean, there's a lot of detail though. Some. Detail. Uh, but anyway, it came out last year, and it's basically set in two time periods. It's set uh, sort of in the now, yeah, sort of like this kind of like countercultural kind of like uh, like a little like a little countercultural zone. Okay. It's sort of cut off from like big surveillance and cut off from, you know, corporate interests and stuff like that. It's Typical. Like a, it's, so it's kinda of like a like a modern day maybe like hippie commune. Mm. Uh, and then it's set in a future period in which uh, and this is a, a a nightmare that's that I hope is never realized. Mm. A future in which there's been a terrorist attack that's cut the internet off. Oh the, no the internet's over and it's kind of set it sort of goes back and forth between these time periods, and it's How, kind what's of, what's the difference in time? Is it like ten years, fifty years? What's the? It's a bit vague. Okay, but are they different characters? Yes. Okay, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, thus far, uh, but it's kind of you know, it's it's all about uh, you know privacy and you know privacy versus convenience and all. This yeah, stuff. sure. But it's yeah. kind of like you know, it's re- very fascinating. I so. think convenience won in the end, didn't it? it kind of did, yeah. 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 Every app wants to know your location, and it's like you don't need this. Mm. You don't need this location. Yeah, it's like yeah. can we have your location even when you're not using the app? And, uh, <laughs> just for us, just for we us. promise we, we won't I mean, sell we it just, to anybody. But we, we will. We're going. We're definitely going to. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you reckon about that? So that's the world we live in. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. What's that called again? Infinite detail. Infinite detail. Okay. Or infinite detail. Detail. Where you're from? Nobody says that. If you say that, stop listening to the show. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Wow, your your slight difference in pronunciation, racist. That's, That's right. Wow, I've finally been outed. Yeah, I hope somebody makes a compilation of all the times you pronunciation get racist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you? No, actually, I don't mind at all because I get constantly told that I pronounce things wrong. By me? Ye, no, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, it's mostly people being like, "Why do you say Australia? Why don't you say Australia?" Because I fucking live here and I say it how it's said here. That's why, idiot. Anyway, so go on. <laughs> Uh, Should well, we do some letters? No, Mason, I'm still going. Oh, we're no, still going. No, sorry, keep going. Okay, here yeah. we go. The classic one was the letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. If you'd like to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter mm-hmm. or Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com if you want to shoot through on it at gmail to nickmason.com. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, don't go to nickmason.com. I assume that's the drama from Pink Floyd. Let's find out while Please you read do. your first letter. Oh, I'll read some letters. That sounds like a good yeah. idea. Uh, let's see. Speaking of Nick's, this is from Nick Naldi. Wow. Uh, it, says, uh, it says, graduation time, podcast time. Whoa. Hi, James and Nick. I'm a longtime fan of the podcast, and since I'm graduating from high school in the 25th year in California, I thought it would be the perfect time to write to the two podcasters who helped keep me sane while doing physics homework I couldn't understand. <laughs> well, then. Graduate pretty sneaky if you're graduating, then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he probably sounds like he, <laughs> sounds like he cheated. I'm just. <laughs> 
Anyway, my question is, which superhero or villain alternate costumes are your favourites? Oh, that's Personally, a tough... Personally, the Batman Beyond suit and Spider-Man symbiote suit will always be my favourites, but I'd like to know what yours are. That's a great question. I really like the Ben Riley Spider-Man suit. Yes, the one with the hood. It's your favourite. No, no, <laughs> wrong. That's the Scarlet Spider. Yeah. When he became Spider-Man... <laughs> I he like had the a, hood one. He had a, he had a, he had a cool... Ni- like, speaking of 90s costumes, yeah. which we weren't, but I was thinking the other day, uh, <laughs> most of them are bad. Sure. But the the... Ben Riley Spider-Man suit is very cool, and I wish they'd kept it. Are they all bad? And I don't think it's even in the Spider-Man PS4 game. I think it's the one they missed out in. So oh. what's it called again? Let me the give Ben the Riley Spider-Man ben costume. Ben Riley Spider-Man PS4. Here we go. No, the hood one. The hood one's in there, but that yeah. one isn't. Which is no, very... I like the hood one. You would. Uh, Nick Mason also diverts to nicmason.com slash blog, and there's huh. some kind of portfolio. Huh. Of someone called Nick Mason. Uh, yeah, alternate costumes. Um, I like the black suit Superman. I like yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, more often than not, they're not like a costume change isn't great. Mm-hmm. I would, I'm trying to give some some examples. Batman's always changing the logo. Where do you stand? Well, see, on that's that? the thing, especially now. Like it, you know, if you watch uh, any of the MCU movies, the characters are constantly yeah switching outfits. Iron Man. I don't like the triangle now. Iron Man. That's one suit. of the worst. Yeah, mm-hmm. I really like the Miles Morales suit. I know it's not technically an alternate. So, uh-huh. but I like I really like that design. Same with the Spider Gwen one. I think that kind mm. of that the white and the fluoro colors on it look really yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Hmm. What else have we got? Uh, here? What about the uh, the nineties Thor design where he had like a midriff top? No, I don't like any of that. I don't like any of that. What do you think about <laughs> what do you think about like Grey Deadpool, Grey Wolverine, that kind love of em, stuff? Love them yeah? when they're in X Force. Very cool. I uh, love a tactical suit, a stealth suit, <laughs> a snow suit. I don't love the Iron Spider suit from the comics, but I like the one in the movies. Yeah, right. Uh huh. I kind of, I, I think it's okay the one from the comics, but yeah, I like it when the Hulk changes his, the color of his shorts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like the Captain Marvel. Uh, this is not really so the much Mohawk? a look. The Mohawk, I think yeah, mm-hmm. that really works for me. I think. Yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, what else? Any? I'm trying to think of others. People have got Power Rangers here because I guess all power, there's different Power Rangers, isn't there? There sure is. There's a million billion Spider-Man ones. Mm. Yeah. As we found out from the PS4 game, yeah. That's right. And it's really good that they put them out and you just you could earn them in-game. You, you know don't have I mean? to buy them? No. You yeah. can just earn them. You get enough Ben Riley tokens or whatever. <laughs> what do you think of, um, like, did you think a Hulkbuster would count as a design? It's not so much a... No. No, because it's just like a different suit that he's got. Yeah. I don't know. We've named them all, though. Hey, here's a question for you, though. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Red Nightwing, Blue Nightwing. Blue Nightwing. Me too, but why? Good question, right? Mm. I think because, oh, well, here's the thing. Because or I, original Nightwing. I, oh, big with collar. A, a disco collar. A disco <laughs> yeah. collar open shirt. I, see, I was going to say it's because I feel Robin exclusively has the use of red, but then Dick Grayson used to be Robin. Exactly. So Did he sure. start with blue, the blue suit or the red suit? He started with the blue suit. Okay. Yeah. And then the red was quite recent. And I think. And then Red Hood does red, so it's like. That's exactly. Yeah. So maybe you'd go, okay, well, all the sidekicks get mm. red. Yeah. But then I'm like, no. Mm. But maybe I, that's just because the era of Nightwing that I read mostly yeah. you had the blue logo. That's true. I like a lot of the um, Injustice costumes. Oh, yeah. Mm. I think they're really cool. Like they collar Superman, which I think is mm, yeah, yeah. good ones in there. I don't love the Batman one in there. It's like a bit too armored. I don't like it when Batman gets too armored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just the regular. I like it when he puts on a specific armor. Yes. Or when he's Snow regular. Armor. Yeah, exactly. Camo armor. The predator hunting armor. But exactly. I'm talking about when his regular suit is just yeah, like yeah. an armored it's suit. Too, it's I don't too, like it. Yeah, he's yeah. May, he may as well be Iron Man at that point. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. That's I got right. a tweet here though. I'm ready. From Daniel. Uh, I'd love you guys to revisit some of the classic Star Wars fighter games like X-Wing, TIE Fighter, The Caravan of Garbage. Uh, yeah, I, th- I would like to do that as well. We can do that. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I think I've got them on Steam anyway. I think I bought a Star Wars pack years ago. and then right. went, I never played any of these. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd probably find. Yeah, I don't know how interesting that would be. Oh, that reminds me, because this week we talked about uh, comic books. Yes. And essential starter comic books. Mm. Uh, if you follow Gail Simone on Twitter, yeah. this week she mentioned that she is putting together, oh, yeah. I think as part of, uh, Black Lives Matter. She is mm. putting together a charity uh, comic book bundle. So she's yes. gone to all the major comic book publishers, and she has asked them if they'd like to contribute some big books to a humble bundle. Yeah. So if you follow her on Twitter, uh, there'll be some details on that. So it'll and humble bundle is usually like you can pay five bucks for the basic pack, whether it be comic books or video games or something like that. You pay five bucks for the basic pack or ten bucks for an extended thing. Yes. And you it, it's. It's going to be something along the lines of like 60 graphic novels or something like Incredible. that. Incredible. Or like 60 like story arcs or something like that. So yeah. 
That's I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to probably get that. It, it's probably going to be this week. So yeah, because you mentioned something along the lines of like somebody should. I thought about somebody should do this, and then she's like, "Well, I I'll do it. I'll do it. Exactly. I can do yeah, it." Yeah, so yeah. that's really that's really great. That so, is great. Yeah. Uh, so if you want some good cause as well. Again, so yeah. yeah. Mm. So if you want to, you want some cheap uh, starter comics. If you want to get into it real quick, yeah. that'll be that's your the way to do it. Protocol. Yeah. Terrific. Here's some more emails. I love emails. This is from Eric Cunningham, and it says, and it was an intriguing subject line, which is why I clicked on it. Mm. It says, help name my best friend's baby. There we go. I can do this. Hello, James and Meso. I urgently need your help to persuade my best friend and his very pregnant wife to name their child Martha. Uh, why Martha, you ask? Well, I think we know, but we'll, we'll go through yeah, this we anyway. Know. We'll go through this charade anyway, James. We'll do it. Despite over a year of begging and pleading, my best friend Kyle did not regularly listen to the podcast until your Batman v Superman episode. He then listened to every episode you have, and I think him naming his baby girl Martha would create a bond between us and the pod that would live on live on in her for years. Uh, and beyond this podcast. Either way, he'd love a baby shout-out as he's now just a month away from descending into a James-like madness. Uh, love, Eric. Um, hey, I didn't invent this madness. I merely adopted the madness. Well, exactly, it's exactly right. I should point that out. Uh, I would say it, it would create a bond between us and the pod if you named the child James Maso. Yeah. Ina. Because it's a girl, <laughs> presumably. Yeah. Or even podcast. Ms. Podcast. Ms. Podcast. If you can name if you Kyle, if you're listening, yeah. if you could name your child Ms. Podcast, Ina. Yeah, yeah, this podcast, Ina. Just so you know, it's a girl yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you could do that, I would be shocked if they went with Martha. Is anyone doing that anymore? Is that a name that people still name their kids? But then again, like old time, old school names are coming, names back. coming back. Coming so back, which I quite like. About, yeah. So yeah, I like those names. Mm. You got some Edna's floating around, haven't you? Do you? I don't know. I don't, I don't oh, know that one, but I bet they're I out there. I feel like Martha is right on the line. I feel yeah. we couldn't go with with Edna. I think Michael has been retired. <laughs> <laughs> they fuck it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's enough Michaels at There's this point. There's plenty of Michaels in there. Are you a Michael, aren't you? I know oh. you're Nick Mason. I forgot for a second. What is happening here? <laughs> you have gone baby crazy. I've got a tweet here from Jeremy M, probably uh-huh. Michael. Yeah. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I'm loving these tweets, Mason. Do you think some <laughs> or all movies should be delayed? And ha- uh, Sorry. Do you think I some... Think all movies should be delayed. <laughs> I agree. Regardless of the current world situation. Do you think... All be, they've all been bad lately. And they've had a too good for too long. I think so too. Do you think some or all of the movies that have been delayed will have immaculate visual effects since companies should have uh, spent all the time cleaning up dodgy CGI? Look at it, you, Wonder Woman 84. The answer, I Shade. think, is no. Yeah. I well, think because... I have an example of this. Yes, actually. go ahead. Oh, no, you go. And then I I'll, was going to say, yeah. I think that, if anything, mm. movie studios right now will be thinking... They will take anything. Yeah, they will take any movie we put out. They will, they will, they will eat it up with a spoon. So mm. It does not matter. They, they, they'll, we'll probably get a cat mm. situation where there'll be unfinished CG in some of these movies. And why would you kind of put more money into a movie when you're not even sure you're going to get a box office return on it, yep. even if it ends up in the cinema, which it mm. might not? Uh, but example is, I know Bond was finished months ago because we were like weeks away from getting that, like one or two weeks. Yeah, and they. And they shut everything down. And so they, yeah. the, the director talked about this and he just went, it's done. They locked it. They went, this is the money that we put into it and the movie's yeah, right. finished. So it's done. We're not, they're not even editing anything else. It's finished. The movie is done. So that's, so I think, I think there'll probably be some, some examples of that not being the case, but I think the general consensus would be, why would we spend any money on this? Yeah. 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 What else you got? Okay, one more email. This is from Rick Santana and he's uh, provided the I love sub- his album with Rob Thomas. Mm-hmm. Is that Go a good on. album? Supernatural. Yeah. The album Supernatural. Yeah. Well, I featuring be- the worldwide hit Smooth. Featuring yes, that's Rob right. Thomas. Well, I remember, and a Nickelback one or whatever, but I remember I had a friend who was like, people think he's doing amazing guitar stuff in that, but just it's noodling. just like regular. <laughs> yeah, it's he's noodling. just noodling. Anyway. I know he is a good guitarist, but the stuff on display in that is like pretty standard fare, but apparently. But that's, that's, that's virtuoso guitar playing. It's just a lot of noodling. <laughs> it is. It's my least favorite type. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, sorry, go on. Uh, anyway, he's, he's given the subject line a semi-interesting hypothetical, which intrigued me. If you love guitar noodling, you should do it, by the way. That's, I'm, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, just so oh people God. know. Just, <laughs> just do, do whatever you want. Just just, just noodle on a mountaintop yeah. or just if you're into metal, just... just, just Noodle on a mountaintop. Just know in an ice cave, James. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're right. Just in an ice, God damn it. You're right, sorry. If you like, Norwe- <laughs> if you like Norwegian black metal, you, you guitar noodle in an ice cave. <laughs> Definitely. That's just how it works. I'll stop They'll interrupt. take your license away. They will. I'll stop interrupting you. Please continue. Uh, he says, uh, sup, stink boys, which is a good start. Oh, come Old. on, mate. He doesn't know how we stink, but we do. Yeah. Uh, hope all is well. Thank you guys times 1,000 for keeping the entertainment coming. It's awesome to have something to look forward to as much as the Weekly Planet and Caravan of Garbage and now Big Sandwich content. 
Yeah. Uh, especially as of late, the states have been feeling real chaotic. Uh, I'd also like to sincerely thank you both for helping me gain confidence in having my own opinions despite their popularity during some crucially formative years of my life because you like what you like. Does he have an example of that? Nope. Fuck. Because <laughs> I love being like someone's like, I love this thing that everyone hates. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy right. it. No, that's, we'll, we'll think of something next Except week. Except if they're real belligerent about it. I'm talking about Batman v Superman oh, fans. Uh, have, we got any, <laughs> have we got any good pushback from now? Our, our... Yeah, oh yeah, but it's, you know, to be honest, it's standard stuff. Like I've been looking through them and it's like, you paid by Marvel. Why don't you kiss Marvel's dick? It's just standard stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't yeah, want to yeah. do it just the for stuff do- in the standard Marvel contract that we get. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like I just, I don't want to do it for the sake of doing it. No, and exactly, there's a lot of yeah. like, you don't understand it. And then there's eight paragraphs on what we don't understand. Yeah. And, but then there's another person who's got eight paragraphs on the same thing, but they have a different understanding on it. Mm. And it's almost like movies can be interpreted however you want. That's right. Anyway. But not except the way we. <laughs> yes, that's that's right. wrong. To be uh, fair though, most of the comments. Very nice, yeah. Right. Uh, big, big, yeah. yeah. Anyway, here's, uh, here's Rick's hypothetical. Jordan Peele and Wes Anderson have expressed interest in directing films for you. The only two upcoming films you have slated are a Transformers reboot and a Star Wars reboot. Who directs what? Mm. So Wes Anderson, the king of twee. Yeah. And other things, but a lot of twee. And Jordan Peele, the, the king of modern day horror. Would you take... Prestige horror. Yes. Mm-hmm. Would you take a kind of slice of life Star Wars set in a space hotel... Kind of see, that's, that's, that see, would be completely good, yeah. different. Yeah. I feel like Jordan Peele could. I mean, we don't know necessarily. See, here's the thing. Doesn't mean we, he's going to do horror. That's what I'm yeah. saying. But I feel like Wes Anderson, it's going to be a slice of life somehow. You know, yeah. You know, like I would kind of like to see a like a. I feel like Wes Anderson would do a an, an incredible Transformers cartoon from the '80s impression. Like yeah, it would right. be live action, but it would be dead on. Like I'd really, I, I'd also like to see Transformers filmed in that way, mm. where it's. Yeah, you know, because it's very kind of, it's almost like dollhouse like the way that scenes yeah, are shot. Yeah, right. Uh huh. And, but you've got Optimus Prime. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Anderson for both is my answer. Well, all right. That's fine. <laughs> no, I think Jordan Peele would do a really good Star Wars. Hmm. Yeah. But I don't, again, I don't think, yeah, he wouldn't be like, I'm going to make, you know, that Death Troopers, like the horror thing. Yeah, right, right, I think right. he could just tell his own story. I think he'd do a great, I think Jordan Peele would do a great Transformers as well. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how he would, I don't know what, it would, but you know what? I think he would do better. I think his his Transformers character stuff would be a lot better. Yeah. First okay. of all, they wouldn't be those weird racial stereotype robots. That's true, I think yeah. number one, they would Or if be they like, did, they'd be telling you something. Exactly. And that's okay, yeah. Uh, but I think he would do just just characters that you can believe would be real characters. Yeah. Think, which, which is what Transformers sorely needs. If you have mm. giant robots shooting at each other and transforming into planes and tanks, yeah. you need people in that world who, who you... Who are an anchor. And a sandwich wiki. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Bring back Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, why not? Mm. Uh, I also think that he probably grew up with that stuff in the way that Wes Anderson didn't. I think Wes Anderson wasn't a Transformers fan growing yeah, up. Yeah, Wes Anderson, he went straight from like a bassinet with a big bonnet on it. Yep. To um, Riding a penny farthing. Riding a penny farthing. <laughs> well, he was in the scouts for a bit. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, he was on a scout troop where they were all, they all walked into what, they were all a silhouette of walking in a line. <laughs> You know, through through the silhouette of some woods. Yeah, that's right. a wise old owl. Yeah, who was stop motion, maybe. Then, <laughs> then he was on a penny farthing. What's he like? I don't know. Seems nice enough. Yeah, yeah. I like I his know. movies, I think. Yeah, all right. I think. Mm. You don't like him? No, I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. Oh, but Wes Anderson, Star Wars. Yeah. You see? Now, it's. Mm. I think I just I think the reason I say Transformers are him because you sold me on the idea of him doing a Transformers and maybe there's yeah, a right. plaid Transformer uh-huh. yeah, yeah. as well. <laughs> have you seen the Patrick Willems video that is Wes Anderson X-Men? directs the X Men? Yeah. yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah it's very yeah, cool. it's really very cool. Good. Um, well, you're bloody best mates with him, aren't you? On Twitter, yeah, you guys are chumming it up. We're chumming it up. You're leaving anyway. me out of it. You got to start a new podcast. It's called yes. Two Fucking <laughs> Go Sons of Bitches Cut James Out of a Podcast. <laughs> yep, <laughs> he's great. I like. Him. <laughs> um God. This is this 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 is God, this is a this is a real You really hung up on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because one one of them doesn't get Transformers and one of them doesn't get Star Wars. Yeah. Space Hotel. Space Hotel. I reckon uh yeah. You know what, Jordan Peele Star Wars, where's Anderson Transformers? Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with Locked you on that. In. Yeah. Great. I've got one more tweet here from Marcus. I'm ready. It says when will it be the right time to do a proper injustice film? I feel like we need at least another Aquaman, a couple of good Justice League films. Audiences need to be able to understand parallel dimensions, etc. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I think if they do like Flashpoint, which there was rumors of recently, uh-huh. I think Jeffrey Dean Morgan were talking about. Yeah, right. Who knows? That's been we've had that rumor <laughs> yeah, for yeah, yeah. hundred years. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's one of these things where because we talked about in the Caravan of Garbage movies, yeah. like Zack Snyder would do a great Injustice yeah. universe movie. But do you need a live action Injustice? And also at this point, I again, like I think that it wouldn't be different enough from the the Zack mm. Snyder existing yeah. DC. I mean, he'd have movies. the collar. He'd have the Superman. He'd, collar. Superman would have a collar, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I. Yeah, I, I don't think it'd be different enough that yeah. people people would. I think people would be so confused. Yeah, they'd be like, I don't understand. Is this the same? I guess that's why you're that saying color, like but, you do your Aquaman's, you do a few more. Yeah, a few more to make it. Yeah, yeah. make make if if you would. Yeah, given enough time, mm. if you made them more colourful and kind of cheery and more optimistic, yeah, then you could take the wild left turn into injustice yes. again. Because I think that's why if they where well, they are, they're doing the Marvel what ifs. Mm. Now that we've established twenty two movies, then you can be like. Zombies, and yeah, people right, are like, uh-huh. oh, I get this, yeah, I get you know it, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I think you might be right. So, yeah, the minor, but again, I think sometimes universes can just exist, like, yeah, they that's can, true. You know, justice can just be a video game. I think it might be animated before it's live. You're probably right because they do that with Red Sun and yeah, yeah, Gas, the Gotham by Gaslight. And but I wouldn't mind seeing some more Elseworld stuff, yeah, from movies in general. And what if, yeah, uh, do you have anything else, or is that the that's show? all the letters? I think, well, then let's go home. I'm home, you should go home. <laughs> Well, no, Mason. got a new podcast to work I on. I bet you do, don't you? With your best mate. <laughs> my best mate, you, James. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Am I the first guest? No, it's Patrick Gillen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to the podcast. We very much appreciate it. These very strange and trying, trying times. Aren't they just? Uh, uh, thank you for, for, for telling a friend. Uh, thank you for... Attempting to get your friend to name his baby after something we've said. We'll get one one uh, day. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for uh, giving a, living a nice review, James. You got yeah. some nice reviews right there. That's a fun uh, thing that you said then because I do. Uh, mm-hmm. This is from Geraldo Al- Alcala B. Best pot around. Five stars. You can do this in app. It's crazy. It app. Yeah. I tell it to you every week, but you never do it, Mason. I'm, I won't. Still can't believe this. Uh, this guy does two voices for an hour and a half each week, five out of five. But which guy? Who's doing the voices? That's right. Um, What's his real voice like, or is it? Does it sound nothing like these voices? That's a great point. Mm. And this one is just uh, maybe it's, it's like yeah. yeah this one's you by have to do two versions there as well. That, that's right. This one's by Good Podcast Twenty Two. Uh, it's five stars, and it says podcast, and the comment is podcast. So that's that you can do it like that. It doesn't matter. That's, we just want the five that's, stars. That's oh, a real, nice that's a real Hodor too. situation there. Boy, that's is all it just. Say. But you can give five stars and that's what's important. That's the most important thing to us that's in the world. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Facebook, at Gmail, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to planetbroadcasting.com, sign up to the newsletter from the great Rob Collins. He's doing it all. He does it all. Has he ever not done it all? No, he's always done it all. That's what I to thought. the best of my knowledge, he's yeah. always done it all. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so he's, also, he's been editing these, which has been right. a huge help to me. You can go to the, uh, the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. To have all sorts of fun discussions with all sorts of fun people. Fun, lively, jovial. Nice. Topics. Very important. Uh, yeah. We're, we're highlighting d- different creators, or this wasn't my idea, uh, but different creators and different people on d- different times as well, which is really cool. Exactly Giving right. voices, which I think is great. Yeah. Uh, if you can also find me at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, on Instagram. I am Nick Maso, N-I-C-K-M-A-S-E-A-U. James, your Mr. Sunday Movies. Everywhere. Correct. Uh, let's see if you want to support the show. Obviously, you can go to bigsandwich.co if you want to sign mm-hmm. up for some little bits of bonus uh, content and uh, help keep the lights on in here. They're very dim today. Yes. Because of the baby. For the baby. It's for the baby. But it's upsetting, isn't it? I'm kind of squinting. It's, very, it's a little bit. Yeah. We're like the dragons in Rain of Fire. The low light. Good plug. Thanks. Good plug for the rain of fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Um, you can also uh, go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you'd like to chuck in a buck. In that manner, that's also It's terrific. also fine too. Definitely stuff appreciate going up that. There, yeah. uh, if you want to, you can donate. You can donate a dollar if you want. Yes. We'll, we'll absolutely take it. Take it. We'll take it right from you. These dim bulbs are, are, very, ex- are very expensive. By Correct. dim bulbs, I mean us. That's why I keep them low. Just trying to make them last. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> You know when a light blows and you're like, oh, my God, I have to deal with this. Yeah, yeah. It's like three in my house that I haven't dealt with yet. A light blew in my apartment and I'm like, cool, well, I'll just take the little cover off mm. and I'll just replace that. And it's like this weird LED grid system. It's got <laughs> wires coming out of it. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. you got to get your dad in. i got to take the whole <laughs> unit out. i got to take the whole roof off. I don't know. I don't know what to do. you got to get your dad I'm in. Just, I'm just going to leave. No, he won't know. Oh. No, you got to get my dad in I'll there. I'll get your dad in. <laughs> <He'll> <laughs> exactly. That's right. 
Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, you can also go to the mm. Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. If, you, if you're stuck at home, you want to get some stuff delivered to your door, mate, why not do it through our Amazon affiliate link? Why not? Uh, you can also get some T-shirts from Public. Dot com. Thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Marakam for all our musical themes. Yeah. Next week. What are we doing next week? More comic stuff, remember? Oh, yeah. Marvel country. comics. Nice. Yeah. Unless it's something else happens, then we'll do that. Cool. And that's a promise we can guarantee. Can we guarantee it, though? Yep. We're going to do that or a different thing. That is a good And idea. that different thing might be no podcast. <laughs> now that's the Weekly Planet guarantee. Yes, it is. All right, guys. See you next week and thanks for listening. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you real soon. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.